Hi everyone, and welcome back to There Will Be Dungeons. We've got Kyle, we've got John, we've got Bo, we've got myself, Kristen, and we're back for episode 33. We don't have any emails. Scott's gone, left us for a talk in the Midwest. <laughs> And here we sit. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Last time on There Will Be Dungeons, four little heroes... Oh, let me restart that. Last time on There Will Be Dungeons, four little heroes went a noise to see. One stayed downstairs, and then there were three. Besieged by baddies, Varel burst forward into primed pistols. Calming the colossal critter, the captain of the creeps commissioned the comrades acquiesce to a request from the 26ers captain. Dinner. On him. Don't be late. Muttering miftly, they moved toward more muddled mayhem. At the gates of the gang's main go-to, the group grumpily gave their guns before gaining entrance. It was a quick elevator ride up to their host, a tattered tiefling tucked by tykes. He tendered but one task. Terminate the tet tending the toe rippers. Do that, and an entrance to the teat's fortress was all but fulfilled. The next morning, following a bear meat feast and the revelation that Bok Bok was now a toe ripper, all agreed to portage a parcel from Charlemagne to Jettles McReady, the area's ammunition armorer. There was no delay in deciding the day's pursuit, and off they went only to find a foul fortune festering on McReady's floor. A, bo a body bloated belayed their boon. Hearing a hubbub higher, Hope cautiously crept up to the cause of the commotion. Reaching the third floor, the tiefling took in the tattered tableau. Spooked by Stanley speaking from seemingly nowhere, Hope yelped. Stanley and Varel, recalling a similar situation, surged up the stairs as Hope stared stunned at the visage of a hissing savage. Now rejoin our sacred syndicate as they face down yet our scared syndicate sacred <laughs> Now rejoin our scared syndicate as they face down yet another horrible beast. Is it a bat? Is it a vampire? Tune in today to discover what evil truly lurks in the shadows of the Teat. When last we left off, you were you had ascended the stairs of Gentleman McCready's building. Hope it was uh, up the third flight of stairs that you had entered into a darkened space. And you saw a lot of empty boxes and crates. Something had fallen. A noise had brought you up here. It sounded like a pipe sort of crashing onto the ground, like something being knocked over. You looked around a few moments and didn't see anything in the darkness, in spite of your dark vision. When a when a piece of slobber fell down <laughs> onto your shoulder and you, you picked it up and you looked at it and you shook your head. And as you turned around, attached to the ceiling, sort of client, like holding on two hands and two feet, but with its head turned around completely in a 180, was this gaunt, pale visage, but feral, and its teeth extended, its jaw, <sighs> and the teeth grew out and it leaps for you. Now Varel and Stanley decide to, that they're going to start booking it for the stairs. I need everyone to roll initiative. And while I'm at it, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sure. Okay, good. 19. Uh, 20, not natural. Okay. Not that it matters. I don't know why I included that. Yeah. Just say if it is natural. I'll assume it is. Well, well it's iffy. All right. As you were. Uh, Hope, would you roll? 12. <laughs> Okay. Perfect. And uh, let's get a roll one time for whatever it is that's jumping off the ceiling. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, 12. All right. Stanley, you're first to act. You hear a crashing noise. You hear a loud, <sighs> what you think sounds like some sort of hostile creature. Could be. You know, could for all you know, it could be a, a not a squirrel, but you know, a feral like wolf or something. It's you hear a, an aggressive hiss up the stairs, and you see Varel's eyes sort of go wide. All right, I will uh, run up towards the sound um, and enter the room if I'm able to. Okay, so stairs uh, are difficult terrain for your movement, so they'll cost half your movement. You got thirty. You can dash. For 60, but it'll be reduced to 30 because of the half, which will get you 
up the first flight of stairs and around the corner to the base of the second. All right. Well, I will use my full movement to get as high up as I can then. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, Varel, your turn. Did I get out in front or am I at the base of the stairs as well? You're at, you're at the base of the stairs. We're starting off at the base of the stairs. Cool. I would like to bound up the stairs and I'll make uh, athletics if possible to okay. do so swiftly and multiple steps at a time. Oh, right. In order for the express purpose of gaining some movement speed, potentially. Yes. And also because I'd be very energetic because I'm assuming that something's going to explode up there. So even even so much as to grab the uh, is it a banister, the the railing and kind of do the the leg kicks on the wall and continue the bound. OK, <laughs> OK, uh, let's roll an athletics check and see and see how this worked out. <laughs> Ten. 10. Okay, um, so you, you do these sort of moves that you've uh, calculated in your mind would get you there further. Um, you don't actually gain any any speed, but uh, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of noise Stanley behind you as Varel leaps past you and sort of jumps up and you end up in the same spot, but he just you, know, you put a foot on a wall, you flip over a banister. <laughs> like, you're not using the stairs properly, but uh, it didn't result in any net gain to your speed as you sort of both end up awkwardly in the same spot at the base of the second flight of stairs up to the third floor. Excellent. So um, the, 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 the thin feral creature, humanoid, on the ceiling, Hope, uh, leaps at you and is above you and jumps on top of you. We're going to be making a grapple. You have disadvantage because it's coming from directly, uh, nearly directly above you. Okay. Then I rolled a nine. Okay, my roll was a 13. Um, so th this creature jumps on top of you and grapples you, which um, let me just make sure you under we understand what that means because I've been kind of playing fast and loose with it. Uh, you're grappled. Um, your movement speed is zero. Um, you can only break it if you disengage or choose to or re grapple. Um, it'll also end if you're pushed. That's it, it just grapples you into the position. Uh, so there's no other disadvantage or, or anything like that. You just can't move, and that might open up some moves on the part of the grappler. Um, so the being gra grapples you, which he jumps on top of you and um grabs both of your arms and holds them in place and says, please help me. And its jaws grow wide and two fangs um, grow forth from its teeth as it make, goes in for a bite on your face. Or what you think is your face. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... All right, so it jumps on top of you. Uh, it bites you. It reaches in, its head going in, and you feel uh, a sensation, a sharp pain in the side of your neck as it pushes its face into you and begins biting. And then its body starts convulsing. As it's like it's almost trying to pull something out of you as the bite uh, connects. Um, you take... Where is it? Where are my D4s, everybody? Let's see. I don't know. Where did you see them last, Bo? Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, five points of slashing damage. Okay. All right. Perfect. So you take five points of damage. It's biting you, and its body is its thin, feral body is immensely strong as it holds you in place and bites on your neck. Uh, it's now your turn. All right. I'll scream and I'll I'll try and push it off as I try to break the grapple. Okay, you're going to try and break the grapple. And I'll use my inspiration from last time for this. Uh, how long ago did you get it? Oh, oh. years. Yeah. I did award everyone with inspiration last episode. Uh, I didn't do it on the show. I did it after the show. It's just so that for the benefit of our listeners. Go ahead. Mr. Uh, 12. Okay. Um, so you, 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 you attempt with all your might to push uh, this thing off to take its... You know, to, to pull your neck away and push its body away, but its strength is overpowering as it stays 
firmly uh, has his hands firmly sort of positioning your arms away from you or from to the side and is continuing to bite your neck. The attempt to escape fails. Okay. I guess that's is there a bonus action or anything? That... No, no. So I'm just gonna keep struggling. Okay. Uh, for all it's you I think it's no Stanley it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna keep moving up the stairs fast as I can. Okay, so it'll take another um uh, of your thirty feet to climb the second flight of stairs. Okay. You, you move up to the stairs, and as you as your as your vision opens up, you see a large. You have dark vision as well, right? So you see a yeah. large humanoid creature, thin, has the trash Bergian shirt on, but looks tattered and ripped. And there's this um, has long, longer sort of hair down to maybe cut to the cut to here, black. And it's got its head into Hope's neck as Hope struggles with their hands uh, held in place outwards uh, as it looks like it's clearly eating at her neck. Uh, all right, I've got a clear line on it so I can attack it. Yeah, its back is facing you. All right, I am going to fire Witch Bolt at it. Okay. Um, so let's see if that hits. That is a 17 plus 7 to hit. I'm going to guess that that hits. Uh, you have uh, you have connected with a hit, sir. All right. That is seventeen damage. So, seventeen electrical damage, lightning damage. Playing with a calculator now, because you know the numbers are so big. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you do 17 points of electrical damage with your Witch Bolt? Yes. What does that look like? Does it have any additional effects? Uh, so as I get to the top of the stairs, see Hope uh, in range, just point my finger casually at it, and lightning arcs from my finger into the creature and continues to just pulse into the creature. Does this magical lightning conduct to other creatures, or does it that are uh, grappled with it? Um, let me see. <laughs> Is it electricity, electricity, or is it witch electricity? Because it just says it's. it's I think it's witch electricity because it just okay. says one target. Okay, so you can control where the electricity is hitting. Very good. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> if not, it'd be funny, but also bad for hope, but funny. Um, okay, so uh, you do seventeen points of damage to it. You shock it. Uh, it pays it no mind. You see scarring and burning sort of cover the the where you can see flesh, and you know that it is damaged it but the creature does not behave in a way that looks like it's impacted by it hmm. but you, you see you see smoke rising from the skin after the witch bolt you see sort of you know cracks in the skin where blood starts to seep out interesting all right that'll that'll be my turn all right. varel all right so i also enter the upper area and can make it to the creature uh, with 30 feet of movement, you can make it to the top of the stairs. You'd still have about 5 to 10 feet to clear from the stairs to reach it for Melee. Okay. Could I do a running kick on it? Give it a a wallop? Uh, a momentum running... kickball style? <laughs> How long is your leg? How long is my leg? 7 feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. Re have a, a leg reach of 3. An inseam. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, with a successful athletics check, I will allow a flying kick from the top of the stairs. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't do like a ninja jump move. I, it would be a running and then a punt. Uh, so if I can't make it, then I will throw my mace at it. So here's what'll happen: if you don't beat if you don't beat the DC and do the kick, you're gonna pull a muscle in your leg, kicking nothing but air. Yeah. No. Can... No. 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 Okay. Kicks are kicks are dumb moves in the in the barbarian uh, Varel handbook. So I would not do any ninja moves. Oh, okay. This, okay. this would be to displace <laughs> the creature off of hope, but otherwise exposing your inner thighs to an enemy 
is not a good idea. So I will enter the door, give a ho, oh, and grab my mace and chuck it at the creature. Okay. Uh, then that's a, it's a it's an, a, a ranged attack roll, but you use strength because you're using a thrown weapon. Does it work exactly? That way? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to throw my mace at the creature, entering my rage. I got a twenty-four. Holy shit! <laughs> so this is the 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 grab it up off my head and as I and put it two hand above my head and give the woo 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 throw. It's less about it's less about the dexterous skill and more about the sheer amount of force that you've used to throw the mace. Exactly. All right. Um, it's a hit. Roll your damage dice. Cool. Mace. Um, sorry, while you do that, um, Sean, what kind of damage was it, your Witch Bolt? Uh, lightning. Lightning. Okay. Thanks. Eight points of damage. Okay. Um, you throw the, uh, the mace at the, at the, at, at the creature, you know, that has hope, uh, restrained, and, um, it travels a short distance, appears to hit it solidly. You know it's a solid throw. But um, it sort of bounces off of its head and just sort of falls to the floor, um, not having uh, taken that much damage from it. Uh, the damage is reduced by half, and it the, the mace falls to the floor, and it continues. Uh, like, it, it basically ignores it. Like, you know you hit it. You know that you've caused damage to it. You can see it was, you know, but it, it is un... It's undeterred from its activity of biting hope on the neck. Now, being that this is a, a... and the struggle's feral, like hope is fighting back with her life. The, the vampire is also. <laughs> well, <there's... laughs> Again, the cat. Well, I mean, it's back. obvious, right? All right. So the... <laughs> the creature. <laughs> Got fangs and he's biting her neck. The vampire-like creature that's <laughs> is, um, is 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 its body is like intense like in Varel it looks like you know prey that's eating its dinner that will do nothing but eat its dinner till it's satisfied and and not let something deter now this um, is just a, a a my own make the bear skull mace is it intact did it shatter on the creature it did not shatter on the creature cool. it's intact all right and one more question is is uh Stanley currently sustaining the lightning yes um, it's a sustain like the lightning's still there yeah so the thing about witch bolt is that if i choose on my next turn as an action i can continue the bolt and there's no okay. roll to see if it hits it just continues to do damage okay, so you're like emperor palpatine shooting yeah. Yeah. so it's flesh is burning and it has um you know scarring and bleeding that's coming from its skin but it's still ignoring you okay so so you, so you throw it while the lightning is is burning okay then could i i so my bonus action i entered my rage but on my rage i can activate my storm aura this creature isn't within 10 feet of me but stanley's currently channeling lightning and i shoot lightning with my rage so <laughs> what kind of what kind of lightning is it my raging lightning yeah is that crackling off my body that that jolts into enemies with my punches and with my hits right i mean so it's like regular lightning yeah, because yeah, I asked John what kind of lightning he was, and he was insistent it was witch lightning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know the science if witch lightning and regular lightning. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, one's know. One's from the devil. Yeah, because I... it's lightning damage, though, John, right? Not necrotic damage? Yeah, it is lightning damage. Okay, so it's the same damage type. Are you trying to chain the lightning? Yes, I would the like to. If I let you chain the lightning. By the same logic, I've got to also lightning hope. And we decided that the lightning is not magically conductive to hope. But you see, uh, Varel entered a room where Stanley is currently channeling lightning, and Varel is surging with rage and lightning, and he sees Stanley doing this, and he would say, Take my power, Stanley! Defeat this foe! All and right. bring down a bolt <laughs> upon Stanley. you got to play your character correctly, and I, you know, I, I'm glad you said that, because now, uh, you know, Hope will... will uh, I mean, Kristen will understand why you've done what you've done. <laughs> so I will... Yeah. So, not... Because I'm... The ten feet's not in range of this creature, right? Yeah. So I will bring down the bolt on Stanley... Assuming that the bolt would shock through his lightning. Stanley with the bolt. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, very good. Uh, Stanley, do you defer your constant your save or do you make the save? What do you What do you mean? You am I gonna get? Am I going to allow myself to get shocked by lightning? A loud crackling of lightning, and you know Varel's doing something. And you glance back really quickly in the middle, and you see lightning pour forth from, from him towards you. You have a second to react to whether uh, or not you understand what he's doing and will accept the lightning. Or no, I will not accept the lightning. <laughs> I'm gonna try to avoid it. Uh, what is it? A dexterity save. Dexterity save. Uh, that's a 14. Ah, you take two points of damage. Oh, so the, the lightning still hits then. It's, yeah, okay. It's half damage all the same, but it, so... I, I made that dramatic for nothing. <laughs> it's gonna, either way, you're gonna get hit with it. But my concentration is not broken. Oh, well, why not? All right, because I just saved. I just you rolled to see if I maintain my... You don't save for the complete avoidance of damage. You take damage. No, I I, I rolled. I took my two damage, and then I rolled concentration to see oh, if which bolt continues. Cons okay. Yeah. All right. For everyone's benefit, who's following along this very this rules madness interaction, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're concentrating on your witch bolt, which when you take damage, you roll a save to see if it breaks or not. Yes. Okay. And it does not break. Good. Perfect. We don't want it to break, or else you just take two damage for nothing. Um, so you take your two points of damage. The lightning shoots forth from Varel, hits um, uh, Stanley, and supercharges the witch bolt. And the two damage transfers over to the creature you're fighting. It worked. Yes. <laughs> I love that it worked. And, but Hope, uh, you also now uh, are affected by the witch bolt. Okay. Uh, so, uh, John, what uh, are the effects of witch bolt? Uh, I mean, do I just roll damage for her then? Because it uh, well, doesn't what, have it doesn't do anything other than damage. Okay, what's the damage roll? Then roll the damage roll for. Her. Okay, I have another question then because we're getting into new territory. When I first fire it, it's two d twelve. When I continue to fire it, it's one d twelve. This would be a continuation of your of your channel, so I would say it's the continuation. Yeah. Nine. You take nine points of damage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kristen. <It's> like... <laughs> I'll become a vampire. It's okay. All right. Um, uh, now, now, we're, 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 <laughs> worth, worth asking right now. None of us are character-wise know what's going on with the, the creature in the name of it. Uh, I would say I that might hope has no idea. be true. Um, hope may know. She has a book of monsters and legends, uh, so mm. she might. It's not the time, <laughs> but at some point, it might be something she would know. Varel would normally know. Yeah. You no, know, no. Uh, maybe Stanley. I don't know if his dictionary has the word vampire in it, but it's an old. Well, it probably where's... did. John? Hmm. Where's my dictionary? Buttons has it. And where's All right. Buttons? Um, so the uh, um, you oh. hear a voice from that. You hear a voice from downstairs. And you're, hey guys, <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I have a stomach problem. It's next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to Charlemagne's. You guys okay up there? That's what you hear. All right. Um, Perfect. He wins. Uh, who just went? Whose turn was that? It was Varel's. That right? was mine. <laughs> My prolonged turn. Everybody no, kind of had a chance to do something. So, are you? Are you? Have you completed? I'm done. Perfect. All right. The the creature biting you. Uh, Hope continues to do so, um, and so we're going to be rolling more damage. It just it continues to it, the teeth. You feel them sink deeper and deeper in your body. Go um, like feel that that numbness of pain when you first like take I don't know if you've ever broken an arm or something, but like that sort of feeling of like shock. There's this feeling of shock that overwhelms you as it bites in deeper and does. Um... Wait, I got I got to roll the the to hit here. Uh, so 12 won't won't hit right uh 12 won't hit okay eight uh, how about 14 sorry uh 14 won't hit either okay so it, it, it's continuing to bite you um but it doesn't um uh it doesn't it doesn't incur any more damage it, it just appears to be feet like you can feel blood splatter from you it appears you can feel a tongue as it licks 
and you feel that you can hear like a, the gushing of blood and your heartbeat boom, 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 as it goes in. Your hit point maximum is reduced. How much damage you took five last time? Your hit point maximum is reduced by five. Oh, snap. So what does that make it, just so I can make a note uh, of it? 31. Okay, 31. Perfect. Um, hope your turn. All right. Uh, my scream of fear is going to turn into a scream of rage as I turn my head and I try to bite it. You're going to bite it back? Yeah. See if I can get its ear or something. Do you don't have... We're going to do improvised damage. I don't think you have... I don't have feet. a bite attack, sadly. All right. So 1d4 plus your strength. Uh, but first roll your attack roll. Okay. And uh, what would the modifier be? Um, I would say it's a strength. Strength. Whatever your whatever your primary stat is, I think I'd be okay with. It's not a deck. No, it would be strength. It's not a dexterity. It's okay. Cool. Uh, Twenty one. Okay, it's a hit. All right. Or, perfect. And then uh, the one d four plus strength. One d four plus your strength modifier. All right. So five damage. Okay. So you in turn bite it back, piercing skin. You feel blood splurt on your cheeks. As you as you bite into the flesh uh, easily, and and sink your teeth, like are you biting something out, like holy field style, like you're trying to take off an yeah, ear? Yeah, yeah. If I get something good, I want to rip it off. Okay, so you bite into the ear, you bite it part way off, uh, so it's bleeding. It hasn't fully. I think you'd have to. You have your mouth on the ear. For your next action that you have available, you'd have to roll an athletics check to tear the ear off the creature. Okay, cool. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, perfect. Uh, anything else you'd like to do on your turn? No, just trying to bite it and like it's was, biting that me. That was five points of damage, right? Hmm? That was five points of damage? Yes. Okay. Uh, Stanley, your turn. All right, well, seeing my supercharged Witch Bolt is now damaging everybody instead of Hope, I guess we'll bring that to a close. Or instead just the creature, I'll bring that to a close. Um, and I will just fire an Eldritch Blast at it. And I'm going to use my DM Inspiration. <laughs> okay. Okay, that is going to be a 17 to hit. Uh, it is a hit. All right. Find the right damage dice. That is 10 force damage into the creature. It's force damage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, perfect. All right, so uh, you, your Eldritch... Eldritch, Eldritch Blast now fires out at it. This is more of a black lightning kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, not even... Uh, it's just a beam. It's just a, just a flick of the finger and a beam shoots out solid white streak beam right into the creature. Oh, you feel some relief as the electricity finally stops uh, also <laughs> shaking. <laughs> now you only have the bite to deal with and you fire out the, the beam of black energy towards it. Again, it continues to it's force damage, but it doesn't push or anything like that, right? So um, no. continues to break skin. You see bleeding coming from the, the, the creature. Uh, yeah. It doesn't appear to pay you much mind. Hmm. Uh, okay. I think Keep that's... Morel is, uh, you know, in, in mid-motion, still sort of making his way closer to the, to, to the being. Yeah, that's it for me. All right, Varel. Cool. I will... Uh... This struggle is pretty locked on, so I'm going to run over the creature, step over the top of the fight, and wind up my hand to slam its head into the floor. Using my knowledge of creatures and their bites, how their teeth in the wild are shaped backwards in order to escape the out of a, a crocodile, you have to get to the right. back of the mouth first. So instead of pulling it up, I'm going to you know, take a hand up and just slam it down into the ground. By the head. Are you gonna? You're gonna. Is the idea to, that it would it, it would let go of hope by doing this? So so it it's got hope on the neck, right? And it's crouched over her. Yeah. So well, by, they're, standing, they're standing. They're standing in place. They're not on the floor. Oh, I thought I. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I thought they were on the floor too. Because you know he's holding her hand. No, he, he grappled her and he was holding her hands and biting, but they were. Oh, standing up. we're standing. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, unless I uh, hope you also agree that you had fallen down and that that's what everyone's mind cannon was. I have no problem with going prone, but I didn't say anyone was prone. I, w I was there mentally, so I'm okay with it being prone. All right, so they're now prone. Uh, okay. <laughs> they're just, we slipped. The blood. Anybody not imagining what we imagined just had a real, <laughs> so here's, here's like. What the blood spurted everywhere and then uh, hope you slipped. Yeah. And um, the creature, uh, you know, didn't didn't release you and just his, its body moved with you down prone as the lightning was firing and the witch bolts and all the eldritch blasts and hammers. Okay. All right. I, well, now it's making more sense. You want to take his head and slam it into the pin it and pin it or just slam it I, I, I can adapt my attack as well though okay all right so what so wait guys now you can't be prone okay all right all right so so we'll go with the dm's original thought what i'm gonna do instead is uh like a ferret unlocking a ferret mouth i'm gonna run up stick my two fingers into the into the jaw cheeks and squeeze okay. to get that mouth open and try to unlock the jaw Oh yeah, okay. And what's that? What's the name for that? That's, I thought there was um like an you know the like actor has the cuts on his cheeks. Um. Okay. Uh. So that is not an attack. That sounds like like are you intending to do any damage with it? Or are you intending to grapple? With It'd be it? a grapple, but I want to unhin. I want to delock the jaw first before I go ripping the creature off because this is a bite attack right now. But I take chunks if I rip the creature. Right. Okay. Perfect. And uh, let's do a grapple check. Excellent. Oh, I rolled 22. a twenty-two. I rolled a one. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, you, you, you put your fingers are rather large compared to its mouth. So really, I think you probably just need one finger. Awesome. On side. So, so I stick a finger in each side, uh, thumbs on the back of the skull, and crank those fingers in. So I now kind of have it pointing its head at the ceiling. Okay. All right. So um, it dislodges the bite, and and it, it's quite strong. Like your your muscles are for for a skinny being, it, it's unexpectedly strong as it resists, as it struggles to resist your grapple. You're using all of your strength to hold it into place. Okay. So now you have him grappled in, in such a manner. I uh, hope you see you see the creature above you. You see Varel's big fingers. Varel standing up and holding his thumbs. In, or not his thumbs, his thumbs to the back of the neck, his indexes in the inside the mouth of it, holding its mouth open and forcing its head up. Blood drips down all over you from its mouth. It's like... And it, it, it's, its arms still have you. It still has you in its grapple, like, uh, in terms of it holding your arms. And um, that would make it its turn. Now, how does it get... Bonus action lightning. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, what save is it? Deck save, right? 13. Uh, all right. I roll 13. That means a, well, I'm good. You, yeah. So, one point of damage, half. Okay. Perfect. So, again, you shock it. Um, okay. All right. Um, as you as you do that, um, you notice uh, everyone sort of notices really quickly that um, the... There's, there's cuts that have formed from the electricity on his skin, like just these breaks that have formed in the cuts that have bled, just bleed a little bit. Um, they start to sew up and seal up. And it, it's a, it looks similar to, to um, Stanley's healing magic as it sort of, as wounds sort of close up almost instantly from where bleeding came in. It appears to heal and regain its strength. Um, okay, now it's going to attempt to break free uh, from your grapple. Cool. I think because it's grappled, it actually will have to release hope. I don't think a, a grappled thing can grapple something else. Grapple chain. Uh, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so 11 plus dexterity. I have a 14 roll. Cool. So you have to be. Nat 20. Okay. All right. It locks him in even further. And this time he does release his grip on hope as the arms come off and he puts his arms on your hands where your, your wrists are and attempts to break it. And you feel your hand sliding. This thing is, will slowly succeed. Uh, you, you feel impressed with its strength. It's quite formidable. Um, it didn't break the, the grapple. So that's all it can do. It is now I hope your turn. All right. a, it's, it's like this above you going, ah, I'm gonna 
pull the machete out of my boot and I'm gonna try and stab it in the gut. Machete from the boot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, prone. Hang on, let me just make sure there isn't any disadvantage. Okay, you don't have... To, oh, you have disadvantage on attack rolls while prone. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. It looks like it may hit with an 18. Even with disadvantage? Yeah, I rolled a 15 and a 13. Oh my god. Okay, nice rolls. Um, yep, you take your machete out of the boot and with a stabbing motion? A yeah, yeah, motion. just straight in the gut and then maybe like run it upward toward me to see if I can get his <laughs> intestines out. Let's see how much damage it does. <laughs> I, I can dream. Uh, seven damage. Okay, uh, you run it up. Um, one sec. I have to get my calculator back out. I don't know this one. Okay. All right, you, and it sinks in, but it meets a lot of resistance. Uh, so the seven damages have to three. I actually didn't need a calculator. It appears to have resistance to the damage. You're not able to break a lot of skin as you sink it in. Definitely breaking skin. You feel blood begin to drip on, down onto your hand and wrist where you have the machete, but it didn't go in satisfactorily like you just imagined it would. Hmm? It didn't enter his body okay. satisfactorily like you just imagined it would. Like you're like, yeah, I stick it in and I yeah, rip it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind it of like glanced like, off. <laughs> blood comes out, but it's not. You know, it's that it wasn't a satisfying hit. Gross. Well, I'll, I'll make a very upset face and then I'll scream. He said he needed help. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, you hear a voice from downstairs saying, "You guys sure it's okay if I go?" I hear a lot of noise up there, but I really have to go. But I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Hello? <laughs> All right, uh, Stanley, your turn. So far from what I've observed of the types of damage I've done, has anything seemed more particularly effective or kind of all equally ignorable by the creature? So far, the damage from your magic attacks have not been reduced. Oh. Okay. Um, like I've been making a point of mentioning if someone has made an attack that it's been reduced. There have been two reductions. Well. Bludgeoning um, damage on the hammer and in the case of the slashing damage on the or piercing. I'm not sure which it was but uh, of Hope's attack on it. Alright. Well, this thing seems to be... Uh just continuing to be an issue so i am going to hex it as a bonus action mm -hmm. um and what did i know we got an email about it, it it's i say wisdom ability checks is what i want to make it disadvantage on uh it's actually a skill check I think. No, I think it's ability. I can't. Remember. Yeah, choose one ability when you cast the spell as disadvantage on ability checks with that. So I'll make it disadvantage to wisdom. Okay. And then I will fire another Eldritch Blast at it. So that's going to be a 21 to hit. Okay, uh, it hits. That is going to be 17 damage to it. Okay. Uh, oh, let me be clear on the damage type. Mm -hmm. That's going to be... Uh, shoot. Let me see what I rolled. Hold on. That's going to be 10 damage of it. No. 13 damage of it is force damage. 13 is force. Okay. Uh, and four of it is going to be necrotic damage. Okay, that necrotic damage is half to one. Okay. That's why I had to do the math. Yep, no, I know. <laughs> so that's Fire that's at that. it again while it's being held. Um, and you, the spell, the original spell used was an Eldritch Blast again, correct? Just with the Hex Curse on top of it? Yes. And Wisdom Disadvantage Ability Checks, okay. 
Um, okay, so you blast it again. This time it's... It, you see, now that it's not focused on biting it, it sort of uh, hisses in pain as and body shakes as you um, you fill it with the Eldritch Blast energy. All right. Okay, Burrell. I will uh, maintain my grapple. Mm-hmm. And if I'm required to do a strength check now, I'll do that. Uh, I don't believe you are. You'll have to. There'll be a contest if the creature decides to break it. You have it grappled. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I will use my uh, my free action to to look at Hope and say, "Help it with a gun in its mouth," and I will shock it once more. Okay. Uh, deck save. Uh, 18. Cool. One point of damage. Oh, I like I always say versus your lightning. <laughs> and <laughs> two damage. Okay. Uh, my standard action I would like to have as a if I've got it, you know, my thumbs on the back of its neck I would like to use my standard action as a dodge for the gun that will end up there so that it doesn't shoot me in the face out the back of the neck. Okay, so you used your bonus, and you used to... It will say free action just to say put a gun in its mouth. So you want a ready action. If Hope shoots and points the gun in such a way that the bullet might pierce its head and shoot you... Yeah. That you drop the body. Okay, right. we, can, we can ready. You will we'll ready an action, which triggers on a bullet from Hope's gun coming towards you. Cool. All right. Um, all right, so again... Uh, and attempts to free itself from your grasp. Uh, 19. It isn't able to. You have it held in place. Uh, Hope, it's your turn. All right. I'll put the machete back in my boot and get the shotgun out. And I'll back up so that I've got more than five feet. So that I don't take a disadvantage. And I'll okay, line so up one, a shot. Just a, quick, a quick mention again, but on its turn, I missed this part. Sorry. It's a higher level creatures. You know. uh, some of its wounds close up on its body as it appears to regain its strength. Continue, Hope. Sorry. Oh, that's not. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, 23. Okay. And so um, you stepped away to shoot it? Or oh, wait, you I was still the... prone, wasn't I? Yeah, you're still prone. Okay. Okay. So I can't get far enough away to Wait, even now, do now, this now attack. hold up. What? A shotgun in the mouth gets disadvantage on melee range? Um, well, technically strictly speaking, m- ranged weapons in melee range uh do get disadvantage. Um I feel like in the case of guns, you kind of just think I stick it into the body of the person and shoot it, so where's the disadvantage? But the person there has their arms around to knock it away. Now, this thing is being grappled, so you actually have That's an advantage true. on your attack roll okay. for it. So if you were to shoot it at point-blank range, it would just be parity. You'd just get a normal attack roll if you were to do it at point-blank okay. range because it's grappled. Okay, cool. We'll do it that then, and I'll aim the gun barrel straight at the thing's face and hit with a 23. Perfect. And then it's going to do 14 Wait, points of damage. We're all needs to know where exactly you've aimed the gun. Like, what's the angle? Um, I'll try to aim in the brains up. So Pharrell has more time to get out of the way. You're aiming it up to... He's standing above it. Oh, the, yeah. The safest place for you to shoot it would probably be down... You might even want to lodge it in its mouth and shoot down its throat so the, the whole of the bullet just traverses the body. Oh, that's a good point. But you may want to talk to it, so maybe you're trying not to shoot it in the mouth. I don't know. <laughs> is, that, is that a hint? No, it's not a hint. You just know. Um, nah, you, you kind um, of mentioned, like, oh, it needs help. I don't know if that's still a thing you're concerned I'd about. be so scared. I would just shove it into the throat to the back of the mouth and pull. Yeah, okay. I want this thing out of my face. That feels right. Um, okay, so uh, uh, roll. You rolled your twenty-three. Mm-hmm. So roll damage dice. And the fourteen points of damage. Okay, and it wasn't one of your criticals, right? Your improved criticals. 
Correct. That's only on a 19, I believe. Uh, I think it's 19 and 20, and then eventually an 18. Yeah. I just the high number, so I thought maybe it was an improved critical. Um, okay, so 19 points of damage. Calculator time. All right. Um, so you fire a bullet into its face. Uh, its cheeks explode. And Varel, uh, now's your chance to quickly let go. Well, you can't help but let go. <laughs> it's the bottom half of its face explodes. <laughs> Teeth and flesh and, you know, bloody gobulets fly everywhere. <laughs> and uh, you can only imagine what kind of damage happened inside the body. You can't see it, but it it convulses. And as um, Varel can't help but let his grip go because he's holding on to just two cheeks in his hands now. Um, the thing's half-face body drops to the ground and rolls into a fetus, and you just hear this gurgling coming out of the esophagus because there's no mouth anymore. It's like a, you know, it, it's the back of his neck, some spinal cord, and a <clears throat> his blood spurts out from the neck area where his mouth is supposed to be, and the eyes are wide with a feral fear, and it sort of curls up in a fetal position as it falls to the ground, prone. Um all right, Stanley. All right, so they're both now free of it. It's just laying down on the ground. Yeah. Hurt. Sorry, uh, sorry, Hope, did you stand up and shoot it, or did you do the shot from prone? I was, I'm still prone. Okay, so she's still prone. So she's lying there. She went, and uh, yeah, Pharrell's got nothing in his hands now. Hmm. Hello? I know, I'm thinking. <laughs> Trying to decide what to do. Uh, it takes too long to think. I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the creature now that it looks like it's off everybody and uh, relatively no longer fighting back. And I'm going to pull out the, uh, the little package that was given to me uh, over at the, at the inn. And uh, I'm going to say... Jettel, if you're done attacking our companions, we have come with a gift and hold it out to them. Hope's gonna go wide-eyed and just stare at Stanley. What what, what is it? The gift that we were given at Charlemagne's. I'm holding out the the gift to him. The gift. Oh, the gift. Yeah. I remember now. Uh, You hold the gift out and you say this to him. Okay. That's it's, it. I, its eyes are wide with fear and terror. Um, it doesn't say anything in response because it doesn't have a mouth. If I still have action, I'll unwrap it because it was wrapped up, right? We didn't know exactly what it was. Okay, yeah, you can unwrap it. You tear it open. Is and... it a Tintin comic? <laughs> it's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know which... Hang on. If you'd like to know the exact uh, title. Sure, I'm curious if I read it. All right. Uh, well, um, we'll leave it at that, Varel. It's your turn, and I'll get you that title. Uh... <laughs> it's the Seven Crystal Balls. I don't think I've read it. Oh, is its jaw off the creature on the ground? Uh, yeah, its jaw it was disintegrated. Okay. In, in many tiny pieces, two of which are still within your thumb and forefinger in your hands. Uh, what Stanley did doesn't make a lick of sense. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's magical, and I'm going to keep kicking it. Are you going to kick the creature? Like, stomp or kick? Uh, okay, so so it, it, it went fetal on its side, right? Curled up? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna WWE it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna huh, jump down on it and and do a body slam that I will be turning into a grapple as I kind of try to lay it out flat because I'm assuming this regenerative position is how it's gonna get all its stuff back, and I want to stretch it out. Okay, perfect. Then do uh, we'll we'll resolve this with an athletics check. Excellent. For style athletics, mostly it looks like there's no attack attached to it. Yeah, not exactly a, a damaging attack. Just a very quick way to get down. 
Okay, roll your roll your um, uh, athletics check. Nineteen. All right, it looks super awesome. Now roll your grapple. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thirteen. Okay, I've got seven. So cool. And I'm probably at disadvantage. It's yeah, seven. All right, so so I get a hold of it and I and I kind of work it on top of my body and kind of stretch it out on me with its head up in my in the crooks of my bicep and it's my other arm is holding it against my chest on my yeah against my chest so that'd be about its waist and i've got it held there and i give another little shock through my body okay and uh, we'll save it doesn't save it takes the full four yes all right you shock it for four more points of damage and uh and uh, you have it, you're holding it over by its neck, like your head locking over the shoulder? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you've got this mouthless... It, the blood's dripping down your shoulder as you hold it there, as blood sort of pumps out, just sprays everywhere in front of you and down your chest. Positioning those eyes towards whatever the book that I assume is some sort of great spell that Stanley's casting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's your turn. Um, as you do this, and you sort of have it in its headlock, and people take a moment to observe, um, you see uh, in its neck area, it looks like flesh growing and skin beginning to sort of re-knit itself as um, most of its neck was gone, but its neck starts to starts to form slowly and grow higher and higher, and you see um, your shell pop out of the neck area as goes whoop, and drops onto the floor, and the shell hits the ground. Uh, now it is his turn. Um, so he's in your grapple again. So he begins struggling to break free of your grapple. And he fails to do... Or we'll roll your dice, but I'm pretty sure he'll fail to do so. <laughs> Sorry. 19. Yeah, he fails to do so. Okay, and uh, so that being said, Hope, now it's your turn. Hope's just going to sit there and she's going to be staring at Stanley. That's Jettles? I would assume so. That's who we came to see, isn't it? And then she'll look back at the creature and say, Jettles? That's going to be my turn. Okay. Um, uh, Stanley, your turn. Smote him oh, with the book, Stanley. Wait, 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 wait. You hear a voice from downstairs. Are you sure I can go? Should I cast... Do you want me to enlarge somebody before I go? I feel really bad. Why is no one answering me? Uh, for my turn, I'm going to just continue to hold out the book, but I will take a moment to send a message down to Nash. And uh, in a whisper, he's just going to hear... Nash, we are busy up here fighting. If you think you could be of any assistance, you should head up. Otherwise, take your private affairs elsewhere. I'd really like to help. That's all I hear really quickly. Here, ah, what is this? All right, uh, very good. What else do you do, Stanley? That's it. I'm just holding the book out, watching him reform. Okay, Uh, Varel. Your two uh, teammates, uh, your two companions have not attacked uh, the creature that you have had locked on your shoulder. Uh, okay, so I, I continue my grapple. Have you all gone mad? Jettles is the body downstairs. This creature murdered him. Why else would it attack Hope? This is no arms dealer. Uh, that's That's your turn? I'll shock him again. <laughs> okay you shock him for the four points of damage i fail sorry um yeah you shock his body again oh it's now we're back to him okay his uh throat begins again to Regenerate, and you sort of see flesh sewing together these strands as like vocal cords come back, and 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 you hear from his esophagus, 
his blood flecks all over the place. It's sort of like this cauldron of blood whenever his, his air passes through where he's speaking. And it's, Help me! And the, the throat and the chin start to begin to appear um, as the skin regenerates. Uh, Hope, your turn. Um... Uh, Hope will try talking to it. She, you know, she's holding your neck. Help you? How do we help you? Uh, okay. That's that's your turn? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, Stanley? Uh, still looking bored, holding out the magazine. I just give it a little, like... So you guys, are you breaking off from combat? The only reason we're still going is we're all keep shocking it. <laughs> yeah, basically. I like that Stanley's bored during all of this. I'm just shaking the magazine at him. Make it, you know, more enticing by shaking it. All right, do you want to make a roll? No. Well, is there a roll in there? I don't know if what you're trying to, <laughs> not specific about what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm Persuasion, trying to get him to hurry right? up so he'll uh, do something. Rather than just continue to bleed all over the place, whatever I rolled, I rolled a two for, so it probably didn't work. Okay, Varel, are you going to continue to shock this creature? Yes. <laughs> uh, <so laughs> Varel, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, all right, so we're in turn five now. It's like turn eight or something. <laughs> I have to check if. Uh... An hour. Okay, all right. So my rage lasts for ten rounds. Uh... I actually don't know how many rounds we've been in. That was. I'm I'm pretty sure it's been about six or so. Even so, it doesn't come up very often. Uh, for the rage business, uh, I will I will shock it again. <laughs> I will okay. I will uh, continue the grapple. Have you all gone mad? This creature is beyond help. It stinks of death. Okay, perfect. You shock it, I save, so I'm taking two points of damage. All right. Um, its mouth and cheeks begin to... Uh, you see them begin to sew back together. As he, and you, it's the way it looks. It's sort of like... Um, it, it, the the skin isn't covered, so it just looks like muscle and tendon, and like teeth begin to push out of the the muscle and tendon. And as the two fangs come in, the fa like the fangs come back and goes, and it makes a bite attack against Pharrell. It says, "Help me!" And it bites uh, Pharrell. Uh, so thirteen won't work, right? Yes. It's a mess. Your AC through. So it's attempting to bite you, and it's gra it's biting. Now it's got its it's on your neck as you sort of have it this way, right? Like over your shoulder and yeah. headlock, biting you, but it's not piercing scale. So you just and you hear like the teeth <clears throat> as it tries to find a weak spot in your your scales to bite you, and its you know hands begin to start clenching and gripping you in order to just hold on to you, latch onto you, and feed from you. Uh, Hope, your turn. Uh, Hope is going to start looking around the room to see if there's anything that might help him or seems out of place or, or yeah, like, you Start know. looking around the room? Okay. Yeah. Uh, investigation check, please. A n uh, 19. Okay. You take a quick glance around the room to see if there's any clues as to, like, this person's history or fate or why it's here. Um, you notice immediately, like windows are all boarded up. There's no, uh, there's no light in here, um, apart from the light emanating from the second floor. Uh, the, but as you um, look around, you notice empty boxes kicked over. Like this place has been looted, uh, pillaged probably, um, not pillaged, just looted. Uh, <laughs> pillage is when you burn the stuff. It's not burned. Um, and uh, you notice um, there's like. Like these punch marks in the drywall, scratch marks, and in particular, there's one sort of drywall piece of drywall that's like sitting somewhat ajar, and you see um, you see it closed. Like most of the box, like there's these little military style boxes that are open, look like they probably had weapons in it and they've been taken. Uh, you notice a closed box uh, inside the drywall where like a hole has been punched through. 
sort of tucked away between uh, the wood rafters, not rafters, but the wood, you know, frame uh, around that the building wall would be made of. So you notice that. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm prone, so I'll stand up. And I think that's all I can do for my turn. But I plan on uh, heading that way. It's half your movement speed. So you still have 15 feet of movement. Okay, cool. So I'll head the 15 feet over to start looking in that hole. Okay, you begin walking over. Um, you hear from downstairs, guys, I really have to go. And I'm, except that weird message John uh, Stanley sent. Sounds like you got it under control. I, it's, I got a number two really bad. I'm taking Pod with me. I'll be at Charlemagne's. Uh, Stanley, your turn. Ever reliable Nash. Uh, all right. Stanley, seeing the creature now, only having said the same thing and going back to biting, is just going to let out a sigh, drop the magazine on the floor, and Eldritch blast it in the face. <laughs> Attack roll. Uh, that's going to be a 17 to hit. Yep, and damage dice, please. Okay, that's going to be 12 force damage and 5 necrotic. All right, have to 2. All right, so you all just blast it again. Um, it doesn't appear to pay you any mind as it searches frantically for uh, a spot to bite Varel on. And then with just with my free action, I'm just going to say, why don't we just throw it off the balcony? And that's it. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, Varel, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so you said it has long hair, right? It has long hair about two shoulders. Okay. Man. I will, uh, since it's turned its head sideways now with its functioning jaws again, I will adjust my grapple to be holding on to the hair and try to pull its face away from mine. Okay. Uh, and let's do... Let's... Now that my friends are crazy and apparently not going to help me. I just shot him in the face. You think I noticed with this thing going? <laughs> I'm going to roll on onto my stomach. And so instead of exposing it to my allies, I'm going to roll on top of it. And okay. attempt to adjust that grapple into a, a push into the ground for it. <coughs> Okay, so you're gonna re you you can do that without having to roll. Uh, if you have it grappled, you can reposition it. Cool. I think you can actually drag it wherever you want. It's your movement speed is halved when you do it, so you just want to push it prone, basically, effectively, like a like for a status change uh, in your positioning on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to get into a, a position now where I'd be more mobile rather than stand uh, locking it down. Okay. So you, you 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 position him above you, holding him down. Is that right? Previously, it had fallen. It, it was a uh, fetal position, and I had joined it on the floor to lay with it and spread it out. Okay. So I am now getting... I'm, I'm enabling myself to stand over it while pushing okay. it downward so I can be mobile once again. Okay, so that's that's easily done. That that doesn't require a roll. You have it. Un you have it under your control. It's, it's currently grappled, so you force its body down and stand, uh, kneel on it. Cool. Shock it. <laughs> All right. It'll, it'll be the full four. Uh, so, uh, no, full four. Yeah. You shock it again, and uh, again the, the body convulses. Okay, and then I will say, uh, if your <laughs> if your madness is completed, I can't hold it much longer. About twelve seconds. <laughs> All right, as you as you shift it, um, it attempts to during the shift during the shock, it attempts to break free from your uh, grasp because it can no longer bite at you. It has access to you, um, and this. Okay. And so you make your strength grapple contest, please. 17. 
I have a 17 as well. That means you, you have to go again. Is that draw? No one's favored in that. All right, six. 23. <laughs> okay. So there's a little slip up as it gets free for a quick second, and then you immediately grab it back again and push it back down. As you say, I don't think I can hold this up much longer. I sort of smash it again into the wood uh, flooring. Um, Hope, your turn. All right. I, I head to that hole in the wall and I start looking, searching for something. Okay. Well, um, you know, you, you, you peer in and you see uh, a piece of, you know, like um, uh, a military case, right? Maybe yeah. green or beige. Usually you see green, like a dark green, hard to tell with the dark vision exactly what color it is. You see a handle. And you see if you reached in, you could probably pull it out, but you'd have to pull it through the... It won't fit through the hole in the wall. You just see the handle and part of the case. Okay, I'll go to remove it from the wall then. Okay, so you'll have to make an athletics check if you're going to force it through or if you're going to break the wall and grab it. Uh, you know, specifically, how are you accessing... Okay, I'm going to try and force it through. And then okay, athletics... grab it and pull it through. All right. Yeah, yeah, so really grab on and wrench it looks like it a sturdy through. handle. It's not like a cheap, cheap like briefcase style thing that with the handle would just bust off it looks like a sturdy case that you could probably pull cool uh 18 okay so you go to pull it through and um it, it uh, the drywall cracks and, and a, a bunch of drywall like <laughs> uh, poofs out and, and makes a sort of haze of you know the cheated drywall i don't know if you've ever broken it but it makes a lot of puts a lot of uh, particulate in the air and you just like, <laughs> when you pull it, you grab it, you pull the case out and then it plumps to the ground. It, it's about 40 pounds or 50 pounds, I guess, with the case, whatever's inside plus the case, about 50 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. You pull it from the wall. Definitely has something inside. Well, I'll go to open it. Okay. So you'll, you'll use, uh, you can interact with one object as a free action with one hand. So you can flick one of the latches. Okay. I'll flick one of the latches. You flick one of the latches, and you have a bonus action remaining. And I'll flick but the other latch. You can only use if you have a feature that uses the bonus oh. action. You can't use it, so. You excitedly open one latch and can't wait to open the next. <laughs> it's like Christmas. <laughs> uh, Stanley, oh no, you hear Nash going, seriously guys, I'm going. Don't say it. I didn't say anything about trying to help you, but I'm prairie dogging. Stanley, your turn. <laughs> Uh, can I, I can see enough of the creature to fire at it right now, right? Or is it completely covered? No, oh, you can see him. Boral hasn't pinned to the floor. Okay. Face down. We'll fire another Eldritch Blast at it. Okay. I don't know if that one's going to work. That's a 12 to hit. All right. Because it's prone, you do get advantage, by the way. Sorry. Oh, well, let's try it again. Go ahead and roll that second dice. That's way better. Uh, that's an 18 plus 7. I'm going to say that hits rather than do math. Oh, sorry. You have advantage if you're within 5 feet of the creature. So can you please roll uh, move 5 feet of the creature? We'll say you did. Okay. Okay. What did you roll on the second one? Uh, 18 plus 7 to hit. Okay. Roll a damage dice. All right. That was a 9. Uh, oh, wait. No, that's wrong because I forgot to add. That's a 14 force damage. Okay. Three necrotic damage. So one necrotic damage. Okay. So you blast it again. This time the blast connects in a very strong way as its body begins to smoke and sizzle and the smell of cooked flesh uh, begins to waft in the air. And you see there's a, there's a lot of um, like a vapor, vapor style smoke, right? From, from burning water, burning water in the flesh. Um, and... Uh, the body is full of cuts and scarring as you continue to Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> like, psh, psh, psh. And um, it's bleeding. Its eyes begin bleeding from what you can see. The ears begin bleeding. And um, it's it's struggling. Every time you shock it, it struggles and bangs the ground and makes these loud noises and goes like, <laughs> like a snake being tormented. Okay, any other uh, actions? I'll just look at Varel and say, seriously, Varel, let's just throw it. Get rid of it. Well, your turn. All right. Looking winded on the final turn of my rage. I will pick it up. You, you said the windows are boarded? 
The windows are boarded. There's no light here on the third floor. How? I mean, Except what's wafting in from the stairwell? Um. But <laughs> Stanley's suggestion would make no sense. The number of times something has gotten away from Varel and then he's been accused of letting it get away is <laughs> I too just much. want gravity to do the work for us. You remember when Celibus uh, got away from you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm never, hashtag never again. Like, it, the, the logic is overwhelming. I'm a video game player. I know that running it at the wall and shoving its head through the boards would be a spectacular sunlit move that would be awesome. And I've <laughs> wanted to break those windows since we got in here. But Varel doesn't know that. I think we all have. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, decapitate it, you know. Yeah, drag it outside. Uh, so instead, I will, I will say, Stanley, you should have used the weapon you were given. And I will grab up the magazine, roll it up, and, <laughs> sh and shove it down its throat. All right. So the Tintin books are not magazines. They're hardcover, usually. Oh, okay. So it's a hardcover? <laughs> Yeah. All right. But then, with all my strength, I will smote it with the book <laughs> that I'm assuming is a holy weapon of some kind. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, make an attack roll for your attempt to hit the vampire like creature you're holding prone with the spine of an Adventures of Tintin book. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be a reckless attack using all my strength and bonuses of my final move. And as it swings through the air, the lightning crackles from my hands and around the book. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we got a, a 22. All right, well, it definitely connects. Uh, but let's see what the damage looks like. All right, what dice should I roll for a book? Uh, let me roll a six. <laughs> for a ten ten weapon, so baseline 1d4, I believe. All right. It should probably be one damage. But because you're a barbarian, I think it, we give you 1d4 plus your strength modifier. All right. What we got here is two, plus two for being in rage, yeah. plus four for my strength. So eight okay. points of damage. And, and I failed to save. Or okay. no, wait. It's, no, uh, sorry. It's a dexterity save? Yeah, for the lightning. I 13, which would mean he'd save, right? Right. So he takes half damage from, so 10 points of damage total, two of it lightning. Two of it lightning. So the f lightning goes through fully. The bludgeoning damage is total of eight. Yes. Eight bludgeoning, which is halved. So you pick up the book. It's it's covered in lightning. It's a cover in lightning. It also just catches fire. And there's this lightning and fire arc as the Adventures of Tintin book <laughs> flies down. And as you hit it, pages explode everywhere. The whole book oh. just goes boom. <laughs> and it's like and it, b it breaks and explodes in your hand, and it looks glorious. However, it only does four points of damage, but it <laughs> you feel you feel excellent about this. All the same, my my rage subsides. I use my movement to kind of fall on my butt next to the creature, uh, assuming that it has been thoroughly smote, and my rage is ended. Uh, I, I suffer no exhaustion or anything like that, technically, but I'm definitely breathing heavy. All right. Um, so as you as you sit there, let him go and breathe heavy. One of his hands hits the table, and another one, or not the table, but hits the wood flooring. Another one hits the wood flooring, and he begins to push himself up and rise up. And as he rises up, you now see his face has been fully reformed, as the stitching along his flesh and where the cuts are again close. As you see, relentlessly appear to be closing up. <sighs> And it um, uh, it looks to you with, with anger and ferality in his eyes, but its words don't match the words of his face. He says, help me. And it jumps at you relentlessly, Varel. As you sit there taking a moment to take a break, it jumps on top of you. You get advantage. Grapple, you get advantage. It's, oh, I get advantage. Yeah. It's grapple. Yeah. Okay, let's grapple it. What is going on with these dice? All right, I my highest roll is a nine. Oh, okay, cool. I missed. What's your, it's a grapple. You get a you get to contest. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, twenty-two. 
Okay, so it attempts to grapple you, and you just sort of push it <laughs> easily, uh, and it hits the wall behind you, um, looking shocked. Um, all right. Uh, hope your turn. All right. I, I excitedly flip the second latch and then throw the, the thing open. <laughs> yeah, so you flip open the box, and um, you see inside a giant... It's, this is a large box. It's about, like, this big. Like, I don't know why. It's, like, three or four feet wide, maybe. Um, you find... Well, I'm not going to use words to describe it. I'm just going to put a link in our Slack. Okay. Uh, Once I open it up. But it looks like a long tube with this trigger mechanism and these two of the biggest bullets that you've ever seen uh, sort of wedged into the styrofoam of the case. Uh, You think it might be a rocket launcher. (laughs) (laughs) A rocket launcher, you say? Well, if you want a visual, I'm including the Wikipedia link for uh, what it looks like. Oh my it. goodness! Well, Hope's gonna get one of the biggest smiles on her face she's had in a long time as she starts to try and piece it together as best she can. Yeah, it's in a few pieces, uh, so you, you sort of you'd have to figure out how to assemble the thing. Okay. Uh, I guess what kind of roles would I need to make? Uh, some kind of an engineering role. We don't have a weapons engineering, so I but it would be based on intelligence. So I'd use our vehicle. Okay, cool. The repair. Yeah, vehicle. No, and en- engineering. Oh, engineering. Uh-huh. One that is based on intelligence, not wisdom. Okay, cool. So it looks like a twenty, not natural. Okay, so you're gonna start assembling it together now. Yeah. Okay, so you start fiddling with it, trying to figure out which piece goes into where. Um, it's not super complicated because you are used to using guns, but you want to make sure you assemble it right. So you're able to attach one piece to one piece that you think for sure goes together, but now you just got to attach the the scope and the trigger, okay. uh, which are not attached currently. Just you just have the big long tube. Okay. All right, uh, Stanley, it's your turn. You don't hear anything from Nash on this turn. Okay, and I'm just seeing. Hope. So looking around, I'm seeing Hope assembling a thing. The creature's no longer grappled. It's on its own, right? Uh-huh. Well, it was it lunged at Varel, and then Varel knocked it aside, and it sort of was knocked into the wall. It's sitting pro- sitting. It's sitting on its butt knocked into the wall. Okay. Um, as sort of the free action, I'll just look to Hope, somewhat confused by what she's doing, and just say... Do you have something to deal with this? And then I'll fire another Eldritch Blast kind of casually out at the corner to hit the creature. Yep. That's a 17 plus 7 to hit. You, you did it casual style? Yeah, he just... Okay, just, that's a hit. Uh, that is going to be 10 force damage, okay. 1 necrotic. Did you already do the reduction, or is it actually just one necrotic? No, it was just I rolled a one for That's necrotic just... damage. Okay. I have written down so many HPs now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you fire out at it, uh, dealing it the damage to it, and, um, again, its its skin bubble continues to bubble as you shock it completely. And that'll be my turn. Corral, your turn. All right. So Hope's over a box, excitedly. Over. Stanley's yeah. bored out of his mind. Yeah. Stanley's trying to figure out what's going on. He shoots the, the, the vampire-like creature in the uh, with the Eldritch Blast, but is communicating with Hope while she looks at her box. You're sitting there on the ground, having just been attacked again. Okay. Uh, there don't appear to be any rules about entering a rage more than once per battle. No, I think that's fine. Uh, so seeing it continue to attack, uh, I'll look to Stanley. 
I'll look to Hope. I'll use my movement to stand up. Um, and I will say, <laughs> so once again, I must be the flame of justice. And I'll pick up my mace from the ground and pull out my shield and re-engage the rage and just okay. start having at, like, no more grapples, just a full-blown, like, we're, we're trading blow style. Perfect. Make your attack roll. Reckless attack. Reckless attack. I feel like there should be a t-shirt now. Engage the rage. <laughs> 25. Okay, it's a hit. Roll damage dice. Whatever the mace is. Nine. 11 points of damage, and then I'm going to do lightning through it. Okay, so the lightning, uh, the hammer is damage is halved to five, and the lightning is not saved. Okay, so you walk over to the being, you take your hammer uh, and crush its skull into a flatness. It just goes uh, against the wall, so more like a like a cricket game or a golf, you know. So the way to get the angle with only one hand because you have the shield is to yeah. cricket. It. Yeah, you go, backhand it, cricket it in. Skull is flattered. Blood splats all over the wall that he's leaning against. Um, and and then uh, the lightning uh, shoots through it, and you sort of channel all of your rage. You're sick of it, right? Like you, From what I got from your tone, is it's time to end and deliver justice. You fire the lightning through your body into it, and then the body dissipates into nothingness, leaving no corpse behind Hope's still putting the thing together. She didn't even see this happen. <laughs> and then when she finishes, she's going to have it on her shoulder and she's going to turn around and go, move out of the way! And then stop. Where'd it go? Well, seems like that's been dealt with. I guess he didn't want the book after all. Hope will sadly... Lower the rocket launcher and start taking it apart to put it back in the box. Oh, <laughs> no rocket launcher used today. Not today. We have to wait for Nemesis. I get it. <laughs> okay, so it disappears. Sorry, I'm just I'm reviewing some rules here. Just give me a second. Yep, it disappears into nothingness. Okay, well, there you go. As if nothing, as if it was never there, it's gone completely. Uh, but a dark, thick mist suddenly hangs in the air, making it difficult to, to breathe. We'll, we'll take our break there. corpse with his crushed skull leaving a bloody splat on the wall that you hit him against and sinking into the drywall but uh, and exposing some of the interior of the wall uh, basically vanishes into mist and all of a sudden this dark mist looms in the air and sometimes within the swirls now Varel it's very difficult for you to see so you see these more prominently you see these little Looks, looks like hands, but they're not hands. Like the way clouds form and look like shapes. I mean, if we've dropped combat, in a sense, I will be... I will be attacking the hands. And okay. I would be screaming that it's a servant of Thailander. It's gone invisible. All right, if you'd like to make an attack roll... Uh, at the air. I would. I would like to. I would love to, in fact. With a 22. All right, you swing at the air wildly, but don't hit anything. And you get that feeling, you know, when you swing and you pull too hard. I mean, it doesn't hurt you, but it's just... You're swinging at nothing. And the, the air seems to dodge your hammer. Annoyingly. Hmm. Uh, if this continues for more than the round, my rage would subside. 
and I would throw my shield onto my back and it is too powerful for us. We must leave. And I will begin to run away. Perfect. You start booking it down the stairs. And as you book it down the stairs, there's more light down there and your eyes sort of sting from the, the bright light having been in the dark. Struggling for so long. All, All right. right. It's reaction time. You can explore. Uh, the mist is just lingering in that room. <clears throat> okay. Um, Hangs heavy in the air. All right. I'm going to step outside away from the mist. And uh, I'll head down to at least to the, the landing on the second floor. And you make an attempt to walk away from the mist on the same floor, but you can't escape it. So you move to the stairs and head down and um, into uh, the, the well-lit room on the second floor. Again, looks similar to the third one. Uh, there's a few beds strewn about amongst what looks like boxes that have been opened that might have contained something uh, in this second floor area. Well, it looks like this place has been pretty well turned over. Perhaps there's something we're missing. If you like, I can spend a little bit of time and search for any magic in the area. But I would need about ten minutes or so to do such. Hope's upstairs assembling or disassembling the rocket launcher to bring downstairs. Okay, disassemble it quickly, put it back into the box, snap the box closed, right? You're, you're packing it back away so you can bring it with you? Yeah. Yeah. So you walk down with, or you don't walk down with the case? I, I don't know what you're doing after that. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll pick up the case and I'll bring it down with me. Right. You bring it down with you, and so Hope also walks down. Big you smile said- on her. You could sense for magic, Stanley? Yes, I just need a moment to prepare. Yeah, let's and do that. I'll start casting Detect Magic as a ritual. Okay. Which takes ten minutes to complete. Okay, perfect. But does it look like anything? Is it just a con- you're sitting there concentrating? Yeah, just, just sit down, kind of cross-legged, eyes closed, focused, um, mm-hmm. concentrating for the ten minutes. And then when that's done for the next 10 minutes in a 30 foot aura around myself, I will sense the presence of any magic. Uh, I can see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And I can learn the school if it has any. Okay. So uh, you spend some time uh, doing this. And... uh... After some time, you look around to see if there's any creature or object that bears magic, and you detect none. Um, all right. I would just do, because it's only 30 feet around me, I would do kind of a cursory pass through the house for the 10 minutes to see if anything sets it off. Okay. Uh, you walk around, uh, seeing if you can't spot anything. Um, do you go back up to the third floor? Yeah. You go back up to the third floor, and you can't see anything, but you know you'll be able to detect if you feel anything of a magical nature. Um, you don't detect anything uh, of magic, um, but you do get a strange sensation while you're through the mist. Something that's okay. not quite magic, but not quite natural, lingers in the air. On the first and floor, yeah? Is the nature of this creature known to me? Um, well, it depends on your uh, lore in terms of ancient history. So why don't we roll a history check? Okay. Uh, it's a 13. You feel that there's a sense of there might be an explanation in your dictionary. And you've studied this thing extensively, right? The dictionary? Like this is... Yeah, it's not just an item you have that you don't understand. It's an item you've read and reviewed, and then right. lived by. It's a, and you feel like there was something very familiar about this description from your dictionary. But without your dictionary there to refer to, 
Uh, that's about as much as you can recall. Okay. But you might have an answer to this. Now, on the first floor, you also do not detect any uh, magical sources, but you do return down and see um, a very thin, a very gaunt corpse. And normally, this the corpse, which you can't smell, you'd expect to have been bloated, and it looks strangely drained of its insides. If you could describe it, you can see it bones, its skin sort of draped loosely over its ribs. It's wearing nothing but these... Uh, boxer style shorts and has jungle socks on <laughs> good to know and the, the person's uh, the person has like a big bushy beard a big you know uh, big lengths of mustache curled up and then a big bushy beard and like matted head and near the body you see a cowboy hat and it looks like it's been stepped on so it's crushed and it's got a boot print on it All right, having seen that, I'll just go back to the others and say, I'm not picking up anything inside. I think this is a bust. Hope I'll nod and give one look over the first floor with an investigate to see if anything stands out. But other than that, I'm going to be ready to head back. I'm outside the building at this point. Okay, you've exited outside. Um, you're out in the sunlight peaceful there's no one around strangely the city is usually teeming with folks and you know that everyone's gone to the refinery based on the morning's message it's about 8 a.m um hope you be what did you roll for your investigation an 11 so you look around the first floor and you notice it's sort of separated into a main hallway and two rooms and the corpse is in the room to the right from the entrance and there's like a kitchen area to the left where there's a you know pots and pans of rotten food Cupboards mostly look opened and emptied, but you see sort of rotten food stuffs on the counter. In the room with the dead corpse, um, uh, you do look around and you know that you have this memory of, of the creature attacking you. And, and as you think of it, you sort of think of the, 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 the searing pain that you feel on your on your neck still from the wound. It sort of still hurts a lot. And you look around the body and notice the splats of blood around the same area where you would have been bitten near this bearded man's neck but it's blocked by his massive beard okay um, apart from that nothing unusual emptied boxes of the house the place looks completely looted okay cool well I'll head back to stanley and say well shall we go back to charlemagne's and i'll motion at the box that i'm carrying yeah, I think we're not going to get much here, although I am curious who might have been responsible for looting this place. What were they looking for? Right. I understand that the creature might have done this and murdered this person down here, but it didn't have any of this with him. It certainly didn't seem like it was here to loot things. No. No, it wasn't. Regardless, perhaps it's time to head back and see if we can find anything out from Charlemagne himself. That sounds like a good plan. Alright, we'll step out, look for Varel. Now yeah, Varel's he's out there, right? Yep, I would have uh, exited the house. Uh, with a little bit of a huff and a puff and turned around, looked back to see my companions not emerging, gone down you know, on my knees with my toes under my feet, sit in style, and just lowered my head and you know, through my lizard brow be staring at the house and then eventually, as time took a little longer, uh, closed my eyes. Okay. Meditation. Yeah. Hmm. Um, all right. Uh, so they do eventually exit and motion to leave. Uh, are you going to go as well? As I hear them coming, my eyes flick under their lids. And what would be their 
I would wait response if they're just walking out. Are you ready to get going, Pharrell? Pull a foot out from under me and stand up. Throw my shield under my back. Put the bear mace on my shoulder. And look right at Stanley and say, what was that? Honestly, I don't know. No. Not the creature. We have fought such things before. What is wrong with you, sir? Vorel, I don't know what you mean. That was half-hearted. That was dangerous. A spawn of Thailander exists again, and you are unmoved. Hope? Vorel? Are you well? It still hurts, right? The Yes. It... Yeah. it it hurts, but I'm all right. Did you find anything in your rustlings? Yes, this. But I feel like we should get it back to the hotel before we we appreciate what this is. I have my eye on both of you. You, Stanley, have already fallen to corruption. I know this. Hope, you are now tainted by that beast's bite, and I am watching you as well. Clearly only my mace was pure of heart and strong enough to defeat, to daze, such a creature. And you've both failed me this day. I am displeased. Hope tries not to laugh during this. (laughs) Vorel, I do believe that was a team effort. But I appreciate your desire to take the credit, and if it makes you feel better, you can have all of it. I'll start walking away. Credit? We were in danger! And as he's walking away, pointing at him, I saw! We glimpsed your heart in those dark blasts, which did not damage the creature. You have fallen, Stanley. I've been using these blasts plenty. It did... It did plenty of damage. That creature was quite impressive. We have not met a creature we cannot fell. Well, we took care of that one. I don't see how this is any different than any other creature we faced. And to be fair, it did regenerate. So it lasted a bit longer than most of them do. Vorel, you of all people should appreciate not immediately judging someone based on how they look. I assume that perhaps this creature was gentle. We were told to knock and to be uh, very loud and presentative. Instead, we snuck in. I assumed maybe he uh, attacked Hope thinking she was an intruder. I wasn't about to let him hurt her. So I fought back, and when you had him restrained, I offered a gift as an olive branch to stop the fight without having to destroy it. I don't see how anything I did was uncharacteristic or wrong. And then when it decided to keep attacking you, we finished it off, like we always do. Finished it. I mean, besides the smoke lingering up there. There is one creature in this world that has left no body, and that is Thailander. A powerful foe. Now he's returned to us in a new form. I don't know about that, Varel. This... You disintegrated Thailander. That's why we don't have a body for him. He's... You completely annihilated him. If we meet a beast in the desert that farts the words free snacks, are we to stop attacking again? (laughs) It's all situation. (laughs) I'd say it depends. We should get hope to a doctor. I'm fine, really. It's I've been injured before. It's all right. Then where are we going? 
Well, we were thinking about heading back to Charlemagne's to see if we could figure out which of those two uh, unfortunate beings was Jettle, and see if we could find out maybe who might have taken the weapons. He was known to be an arms dealer, and there were very few arms left. I can't imagine that creature being the type to want to hold on to a bunch of guns. But we did see a group recently that seemed to have a lot of them. So you suspect that our 26 er friends have looted this establishment? That would be my guess, what with the child out in front and everything. That complicates matters gravely. So, we're at a bit of a disadvantage. I say we go back and regroup. Very well. Please, lead the way in front of me. Very well. I'll start walking ahead. I'll follow Stanley. Okay, I'll and follow. what direction are you uh, he heading through the teeth? Or through Trashburg, I should say correctly. Uh, are you avoiding? Basically, Matt, are you avoiding Twenty Six Block territory, or are you heading through it to Charlemagne? No, probably would follow the main road down until we were parallel to where Charlemagne's is, and then we cut through that area of the Twenty Six Block. Okay. All right. So as you uh, journey uh, down the main road and then cut into the neighborhood to head to Charlemagne's, you hear this loud feedback sound. As the intercom come on, uh, super loud, and <clears throat> a voice appears through and says, <clears throat> um, "Good morning, citizens of Trashburg. It's Chief Penepmer. Chief Penepoli here. Um, we have we require the following citizens to show up to the de Heat Guard Department headquarters for questioning. Um, no. uh, pass me the list. Pass me the list. Uh, I want um, Addie Norman." Casey Boyd, uh, Dingle Bleacher, Juan Vega, uh, Kevin Schultz, Ron Tang, and um, I can't read this name, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll announce it tomorrow. You're off the hook for today. I'd like to remind everyone that handguns and ballistic weaponry are banned from Trashburg. If you are in possession of such weapons, please ensure that you... Visit our offices immediately and turn them in. If we find them with you on them, there will be consequences, as you know. In addition... Wait, pass me that paper. <laughs> um, and he sort of, she sort of puts aside uh, the paper as the DM looks for the rest of his notes. <laughs> uh, and, uh... In addition, excuse me, uh, as you all know, the celebration uh, for the wedding is on Saturday. And after the wedding reception, there will be the offering of a young innocent to honor the great Andriesta in the Chapel of the Keep. We need a good young soul. Well, the Guzzle Gang has requested that we need a good young soul person to kill on Saturday, as we do every full moon. So if anyone would like to offer, have someone they know that would be a good offering, or have a child themselves to offer for this great sacrifice, please bring the appropriate forms to the Teat Guard head office. And we will get that. We will get the competition for who will be the young sacrifice underway. Again, please ensure you turn in any of your ballistic weapons. They are not allowed on the Teat Guard ground. Thank you. And the, the announcement's cut out. And as you listen to this, you arrive at Charlemagne's. I'm going to go in and immediately head up to my room to stow the box. Just carry it like it's a suitcase, nonchalantly. Charlemagne's there. He's cleaning glasses. He looks, nods at you. I mean, you were just there. Now. You haven't been gone that long. I'm not uh, at Charlemagne. <laughs> and as soon as I you. pack it upstairs, I'll kind of like shove it under the bed so it's somewhat hidden. And then I'll head as, back as, upstairs. As you approach the hallway to go to your door, you hear a loud... Ah! Coming from Ash's room. 
uh, I'll go to knock, shake my head, and think the better of it, and proceed to my room. <laughs> Okay, so you go to your room and uh, you stat, you stow away the box anywhere secret, anywhere big. Under the bed, I think would probably be the the most the safest. Yeah, kind of like to shovel your... the blankets to cover anyone just casually seeing it. Cool, 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 cool. And as Varel, do you enter Charlemagne's? Yes. Okay. Uh, is there any? Are there any parents uh, walking the streets outside? Parents. Yes. Do we pass? There are, there are, yeah, you pass some folks. Just, you know, maybe they're doing laundry or on their way. You don't know where. They look at you folk fearsomely and sort of go to the other side of the row or tend to avoid you. You see adult humanoids, though. Okay. Do you want to mess with someone on the street or do you enter Charlemagne's with that event? Uh, I will glower at every parent we pass okay so let's say you pass like six or seven adults that make eye contact with you let's get seven intimidation rolls all right <laughs> wow it's so intimidating for the seven instances of glowering okay and and this is a a glowering and when i get their eye, eyes a knowing nod and a eyebrow of communication okay a 15, a 17, an 18. A 17, a 6, and an 11. And a 19. Okay, so you succeed in 6 out of 7 cases of intimidating people that when you look at them, they freeze in horror, uh, thinking maybe that you're going to attack them or interact with them in some way, and they rush on as you make these faces. In one case, someone tells you off and gives you the bird as you walk by. And as they as they pass by, I'll say, "Honor your child." <laughs> you don't get much more out of that. They don't want to involve themselves with you, but uh, that one person. But yeah, but you're very successful in spreading a mean reputation uh, <laughs> around town to several people. Um, okay, so you as you enter into Charlemagne's, and I hope didn't notice this because she beelined for the door with her guilty box of pleasure. But um, the uh, Kyle, Kyle and, and Stanley, you notice uh, uh, there's a few people in there having breakfast, a few Trashburg citizens who have visited in and are coming to eat at Charlemagne's. Nothing to nobody looking strange. They look like regular folk, no gang affiliations that you can tell. And you also see uh, there's a man at the bar, sitting at the bar, got a trench coat, like a big duster on, wearing a cowboy hat can't see him from the back but it's short curly black hair and he's sitting uh, at the bar you don't see anything about what's in front of him uh, I will go right up to Charlemagne and kind of usher him over go up to the bar ask him to come down to speak with you and he comes yeah. in uh, <clears throat> channel channeling my inner French bonjour 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 uh, hello Stanley uh, you're back already. Uh, you haven't been. You have not been gone very long. Charlemagne, can you describe Jeddle to me? Uh, of course, um, Jeddle. Uh, he's uh, about uh, five foot uh, ten. Um, he have a, a, a belly, um, a big beard. Um, you can't you can't miss his beard. Not many people keep beard in the desert because it's so hot. But he insists on this big beard with the mustache. Wears a cowboy hat. And usually, you know, looks, uh, he's, his clothing is okay. He doesn't wear the rags of a uh, trash bird. And do you Why? know, did you go and see him? Or not yet. There? Do you know, has, is he generally well liked among the town? Oh, oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, he lowers his voice and says, Stanley, he's an arms dealer. He, he's he makes himself independent and he sell he sell his guns. He is a good man, but he has chosen a, a dangerous path to earn his money. You know, is he is he well liked? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, a man can have enemy, right? I would think being independent in a town with so many gangs would be difficult. It is very difficult, but I manage to. You pay your protection money. And uh, and then you know it does not ensure quality protection, but it ensures a, 
Uh, listen, it's um, what do they call that? A symbiote. You understand what symbiote mean? Yes. Why don't the... money? Then they don't make money, so they're not going to kill me. I'm just going to pay them some money so that they they like me and they they don't hurt my family or my business. So with you being outside of the territories of either gang and effectively neutral, does that mean you are paying protection money to all the gangs? Um, you're asking a very personal question about my business. I give you some advice, but I'm not going to open my ledger book for you. It's a little, a little forward. Well, rather than tell me about yourself, why don't you speculate on what Jettle would do? I don't know Jindal business uh, either. He is my friend. He always say business booming because people like guns. And I don't know if you heard the annonce uh, ce matin, uh, but uh, uh, the teeth guard and they don't like uh, Trashburg people having a uh, gun. Eh? So he's, he in dangerous business. Why? You're making me concerned. Uh, is is Jindal okay? Did you see him? Well, we heard the announcement, of course. And considering we were asked to go visit an arms dealer, we... Naturally, a little concerned about what associating with that sort of person would mean for us. Well, I don't... You guys have been very friendly and nice, and I make money from you, but I do see you carry your weapon around quite uh, blatantly. Maybe I should have warned you uh, to not do so. Um, so, so, ah, so this ban is against all weapons of any kind. I mean, the citizens of Trashburg, according to the Guzzle Gang, are here for one thing, to work in the refinery. And they can't keep control over the whole slum. But if they get out of... Con they've got to keep control. They can't have their their workers uh, shooting each other. Then they never get any work done. Or they have to work themselves. And, uh, well, uh, let me tell you, they hate working for themselves. Well, thank you very much for your information. It's been most helpful. We'll certainly let you know once we've been able to pay Jettle a visit. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so you still have the, uh, the the package I sent you uh, to give to him? Of course. Safe and sound. The deception check, please. Natural 20. Yeah! No, he looks uh, nonplussed and, you know, just, okay, well, very good. Please uh, make sure to send him my regard. Uh, we have a histoire together, and um, I always like to think of him close on his birthday. Very well. I'll walk away. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. As you walk away, the, the man with the trench coat and hat, he uh, turns his head a little bit uh, to watch you walk away, and he makes eye contact with you, Varel. Now, this man is a uh, very dark black man, piercing eyes as he lowers his sunglasses that he's wearing. And as he moves his gaunt a little bit, you can kind of see into his, to his jacket, you know, some silver flash from a, from a gun inside the duster, sort of on the shoulder strap. And he makes eye contact with you. And looks. And then he takes, uh, he's got a, looks like one of uh, Charlemagne's mugs. And he picks it up and he raises the glass to you. And then he turns back, facing away towards the, towards Charlemagne, like towards the bar area. All right. I'll, I am, raise my chin up a little bit and look over my snout and, and head over to sit with him at the bar. Request okay. a drink. What, uh, Charlemagne says, oh, what drink would you like? The beer. All right. Uh, it's a bit early for a beer, but uh, you're a lizard folk, right? You you drink any time of day. <laughs> right? Is there a limitation? No, uh, no, 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 no limit. I, I, here you go. And he takes the cup out of the refrigerated... Uh, cupboard that he has, pours a beer from the keg into it, tips the glass, fills it up, not very sudsy, puts it on the table in front of you, and he says, in enjoy. Thank you. And the man sitting next to you, does not he's looking straight ahead, doesn't look over towards you, doesn't break. You see he's got a plate of breakfast in front of him, a couple of eggs, some, some Brussels sprouts in there. 
some delicious looking fried meat that's full of fat. It's bacon. All right, I'll I'll, I'll play like, his uh his covert game and sit forward with my beer. And as I raise it to my lips, kind of in front of my face, I'll say, you wished my attention, and take my swig. Well, now, not every day you get to see a a majestic-looking lizard such as yourself. I had to look. I had to see it from my own eyes. He doesn't look at you, though. He looks ahead, chewing. Uh, seems we, uh, you and I, we share a mutual acquaintance. Mutual? Hmm. I don't make many fast friends. Perhaps, raising the beer once again, more specific. No, not more specific, but, uh, just don't move a second, all right? And um, very quickly, you feel his hand on your hand? <laughs> okay. You feel his hand on your hand. Um, let's see. And just as you go to look to see what this assault is of him, in, you know, touching you, uh, you look down and the hand's away, but you notice a, a piece of paper under your hand. And then he takes... A rag from the tail, wipes his face, throws it onto the plate, puts the cutlery on it. Says, uh, "You have yourself a fine day, day there, Mister Borel." And he gets up, pushes, and you see he's got these cowboy boots with spurs on. And you hear the clicking of the boots as he walks out. And he walks by Stanley, who I guess you didn't approach to sit with him, and he just goes, and then he walks out. I just roll my eyes at him. But you didn't see the paper. Stanley, you don't have knowledge of this. No, the the, the roll of eyes is just to the little finger, finger guns. <laughs> Stanley's not a fan of the finger guns? No, he doesn't have time for it. <laughs> All right, I will uh, scrunch the paper in my hand, forming a fist, down the last of my beer, put it down, and proceed up to my room. Okay. You proceed up to your room. Stanley, you're alone in, in the bar. I'm just going to take a, you know, I'm going to say a short rest, just hanging at the bar, cool. drinking, casual. All right, Varel, I assume you went upstairs to look at your note privately. Is yes. That correct? All right. Check your personal Slack. All right. Uh, maybe we can do some some headphones off for the two of you, as well, uh, Kristen and John. For sure. A second. Yeah. Oh, us off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just for, yeah, yeah. Stick around. All right. It's just you, so you can we can discuss privately, if you will. All right. I I pull open the paper. Would you like Would you like me to read it or uh, you to read it out loud for our viewers or listeners so they know what's on the letter? Why don't Why don't you read it? Okay says, Midnight, Haunter's Blush. Heard you're in town. Missed you that night. Condemned building what has the red skull and crossbones painted on it. Knock four times. Password is death comes for us all. Missed you in Slave Town. Come alone. I have crunched the paper back up. totally wish I had my level six power now where I could burn it. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll eat it. You're lightning it. You're probably lightning into a million pieces. Uh, I'll, uh, I'd have to rage. Uh, I'll, I'll chuck it in my mouth and down it. <laughs> okay, perfect. It's uh, You eat it. There you go. All right, sticking so headphones back on now, right? You don't have anything. We don't have anything more to discuss. Uh, Bok Bok in the bed? Yeah, Bok Bok's in the bed. I'll let him sleep. You see his little body? Like the, he's he's lying on top of the blankets. His little body's there breathing. 
And he's got actually he's holding the thumb and he's got he's sucking on the the toe. Sorry, oh. he's sucking. On the... Dexterous. As he sleeps. I'll I'll sit down next to him. Get on the floor. Take off the shield and the hammer and I get is did I walk home with a bloody hammer? Or mace? Uh, yeah, you did. All right. I'll let's clean in the sand during your meditation if you Yeah. No, no, I wouldn't have. I didn't even think of it. So I'll head into the bathroom and uh and wash it off. Okay. Uh, does anyone else get up to anything? Uh, I'm going to clean the wound on my neck and then see if I can fashion like a little kerchief to cover it up. Okay. After what would have been, you know, a short rest, uh, I would go to Button's room. Knock on the door. Okay, so uh, you get up and go upstairs. Uh, you knock on the door to the room Ted and Buttons were staying in. You get nothing back in response. Try the... hope you hear a knock in the hallway, but not to your door. You try the handle. Try the handle and the door. Locked. Yeah. All right. Turn around and go back towards my room. Okay. I'll enter it. Leave the door open. I'm just waiting for, at this point, Bok Bok and everyone to, to be up. So right. As you go into go in your room here. <laughs> Coming from Nash's room. Walk on by. <laughs> Want no part in that. Yep. All right. So everyone's now in their rooms, brooding. I'll take a short rest while I'm in there, but I'll also be looking at the rocket launcher. And is my mm-hmm. max HP still 31? Um. Let's see. Let us see. It is still 31. Okay. It's still reduced. Kristen is very excited she might have to deal with turning into a vampire. Hope is not too happy about this. <laughs> but yeah, just work with the rocket launcher, see if I can figure out how to put it sure. together, practice. Well, a vehicle uh, engineering check again, see if you can... So now that you have time quietly to sit with the weapon. Natural 20. Okay, so you spend a, a good 10 minutes uh, looking it over, finding out how everything attaches, trying to mimic what it would do without the ammunition and, and, and see how this particular weapon works. And then you feel like you have a really good understanding. you got to load the missile in. There's two missiles in the box. you got to load the missile into the back, fold the wings down so that it'll fit into the tube, fire it. You do a few practice shots without the missile in it, you know, just to see how it looks. you got to sh- mount it on your shoulder. Um. Yeah. Cool. And then I guess looks like I linked you the Wikipedia page so you can get a kind of sense. There's some action shots of the military using it. If you scroll down below. Heck yes. <laughs> People shooting it, including one with a projectile mid-flight. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah. So you now have one of those. You know what? I've rethought it. Stanley is not going to continue to wait in his room. He's okay. going to get up. And he's going to go back out to the bar, mm-hmm. sit back down, mm-hmm. uh, look over at Charlemagne. Do you have anything stronger than this? Uh, than sorry, the, stronger than what? Than the beer that you've been serving. Um, well, I've got the special reserve of uh, whiskey. Do you drink a whiskey? Are you a whiskey man? I don't know. Bring it out and we'll find out. I reaches down into he's like, This is a special special occasion. Usually I charge a gold piece per drink, but I'll give you the first one free. You look like you need it. He takes he opens up the refrigerated cupboard, clinks around a few mugs, pulls out Do you keep whiskey refrigerated? You don't, eh? It wouldn't be refrigerated. So. No. So he goes into a different cupboard, clinks around. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know either. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Pulls out whiskey. Uh, I shook my head no very knowingly. I don't, yeah. I just, this is a guess based on where I've seen whiskey <laughs> in other people's houses. You hear, you hear a bunk as he opens it up, pours it, 
and he pours a cup for himself is his two glasses. You haven't seen a glass in a long time. Puts the, get, sends a glass to you. Says bon appetit. And he waits for you to pick up the glass so you can toast it. Yep. Clink. And then he fills up your glass again, fills up his glass, and you immediately feel the... I mean, you've drank whiskey before. Got the burning in your throat, and your eyes start to feel like... You know, like... This is certainly better. More. All right. Take a second drink. Yep. Pours it again, and he's like... Uh, well, I think I've had enough. I'll have two, but uh, I'll leave the bottle here for you. Put it on your tap. Very well. All right. He slides the bottle over to you, and you got your glass, and he takes his glass, puts it with the dirty dishes, and leans and continues. Is it something uh, you want to, to talk about? And just as he says that, the door behind you poof, opens up, and these two men walk in. I don't know if you're looking, but you hear their footsteps heavy on the floorboard. And Charlie Mans goes, hello, hello, bonjour, come on in. Oh, it's good to see you. He throws the, the towel down, and he walks uh, behind you. I don't know if you follow the look or if you want to be brooding. In I'd head. probably sneak a side-eye look. You see these two, about five, eight men, large, like double chins, and, and big guts in the Trashburg outfit, you know, with the one shirt and the jungle socks and and slippers or shoes these guys have these boots on and they give charlemagne a hug and he's like oh it's so good to see you again you have a big day coming up on friday yes and he's like oh yeah 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 well, the, well that's why we're, that's why we're here um i'm um, um, i think you got a man uh staying here uh, a big lizard big lizard man he's got a couple, bunch of his friends we want to see if we could talk to him you know who that is he's like, yeah yeah we want to talk to that guy do you do you jump in uh, I'll probably just keep listening for now. Hear how this conversation's going. Okay. Says, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got, um, uh, well, I, I don't like to disclose which guests are here, but uh, I know for you, it's, it's no trouble at all. You probably, I know what you come here for. Um, uh, Stanley, Stanley, uh, is your, uh, friend, uh, Vorel and an Ope, uh, are they uh, available? Uh, the, I have some friends here who'd like to meet them. These are good friends of mine. I'll take another shot of this whiskey uh turn around and say that depends entirely on who's asking now, now you get a better look at them and these are like these are big man they got you can see you can tell they have these big thighs and big hairy legs and big gut double chin and both of them curious enough wearing these baseball caps and they say gray socks on the top and this weird logo but they're old sort of caps and they're um oh all right, I'm 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 Coach uh, Marlboro, and uh, this here uh, person I'm with, uh, well, we call him Camel. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you do how do you do? Uh, your friend of the the big the big lizard guy that's in town, yeah, big lad, right? Big lad, big lad, good mm, good arm. Yeah, we wanted to talk to you. We want to talk to you. We have uh, uh, a proposition for you. Wondering uh, if you'd like to help us out. Are you asking for me, or are you asking for the lizard? Wow, we want to meet. We want to meet the lizard. We want to meet him. Yeah, we we got to meet him. I mean, he's got to he's got to hear this. Uh, he's got to hear this out. Can you know where he is? I mean, we'd we'd like to talk to you too. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to talk to him too. Yeah, yeah. I'll turn, turn around. Don't 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 worry. I trust these. Hold up the oh. quiet finger. Mm hmm. Do a little bit of magic. <laughs> Whisper to Varel. Uh, Varel, there are people downstairs looking for you. Do you want to speak to them? <laughs> so you hear the, Stanley's voice <laughs> enter into your mind. I will be right down. Right down. You don't yeah. hear that, do you? Yeah, I do. They can whisper back. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just lean back and go, he's on his way. All right, Varel. All I'll right. Fill up another cup of this beverage that I'm enjoying quite a lot, actually. Hmm. Shield on the back, maze at the hip, and head downstairs. All right. You head downstairs in this uh, full glory. 
I hope you hear Voralex in his room and walk down the stairs again. I don't know if you're going to rejoin. I'm in the middle of a cool pose in front of the mirror. So <laughs> I know like I'm going away, <laughs> but I'm, I'm getting ready to strike another pose. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, you, you go downstairs, and I've already described the scene. So you see the two men, the two large men with the baseball caps, and Charlemagne standing in a semicircle near the door. And uh, Stanley's got a bottle of whiskey and a glass. He keeps filling it and drinking it. Um, and sort of leaning back and taking them in, and they go. They both they both become quiet as you enter down the stairs. And one of them ribs the other one. Says, "Say something." Hello, uh, great, a uh, strong uh, uh, lizard man. Uh, they tell me your name's Varel. I'm I'm Coach Marlboro, and this here is uh, well, he's the general manager of the Trashburg Gray Sox. It's a camel. He goes, nice to meet you, man. They both go up and they, they offer their sort of these their arms out for handshakes, all like, you know, 40-year-old man style. Uh, I've, I've seen a handshake before. Are you extend and begin the handshake with the... We're, I... we're with um, the, the Trashburg Gray Sox. You know them? I have attacked no socks this day. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a, it's a blood ball team. You, got, you, you know what blood ball is? Yeah. If not, we can explain it to you. Yeah, yeah, we can explain it to him. Very well. Uh, sorry, do you know what Blood Ball is? No. Uh, looks like we got it. We got it. Okay. Well, well, well look, um, you, you heard about the, the wedding this weekend, right? Yes. Yes, yes. So, um, well, uh, they're having a, an honorary uh, a baseball game on Friday. Uh, it's the the Trashburg, I mean, it's the same two teams as it always is. The Trashburg Gray Sox going to go up against the Guzzle Gang Pounders. And, uh, and um, well, listen, we've been having these games for, I mean, for forever. But we love the game. We love the game. But we, we've we never won a game. We've never won a game. We have a hard time getting people uh, to join the team. But we heard that you might be in town and you might be interested from from a friend. A friend said, uh, look like you got a good throwing arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the people in town with any kind of strength, they they, they join a gang and then they, they don't want to be on the baseball team. But uh, here you are. You're not a part of any gang. Just visiting. And maybe you'd enjoy the game of blood ball. And you lizard folk, they're rough, tough. Hey, yeah, they're tough. But, I mean, your friends could join up too. Um, but uh, we'd be interested in, in trying you out for the team. What want is... to play some what is earned in this arena? Well, um, so so here's the thing. Uh, the Trashburg Gray Sox have never won. So we don't know. But don't let that get you down. This time, this one's going to be... If you join our team, I think we actually have a chance. Yeah, I think we'd have a chance this time. I mean, you know, we... we like there's Charles. That's uh, he's got a he's a strong lad. He's always messing up our folks. I bet you if you know there's an out and then he had to hit you, then well you could take it. You could probably take a lot of hits and then win. And you know what? If if Trashburg Gray Sox ever won, it would be a historic moment. I mean, we'd be rich. Yeah, we'd be rich. And and probably you'd be rich too. And and maybe um, uh, for such a tremendous achievement, uh, we'd get invited to to the reception and inside the keep. I mean, that would be. That would be amazing. I'd love to see what's inside the keep. Yeah, me too, me too. But really, it's all about the love of the game. And they're both like talking manically. Uh, it's all bo- bo- about the love of the game. And don't worry, we'll compensate you for your time. We have we have um, guzz bucks. We can give you, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, what's uh, 200, 200 bolts for the one game. For you and your friends, 200 bolts. Money is of no concern to me. Oh. I pursue... Only the glory of this combat, then. Well, then you're like us, and the one the camel slaps marbles things. He wants to do it for the love of the game. Yes, for the love of, of combat. Assure me of one thing. Okay. In some traditions, the winners are sacrificed as the most able. Glory to the gods. If I win this game, will I be sacrificed to your dark deity? Oh no 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 no! Well, I'd say that's a strange question, but um, we do we do have sacrifices around here. But don't worry, it's only young innocents. 
usually it's a cute little girl or something like that, and it's a shame. But, uh, you know, Andriesta must be satisfied or the Guzzle Gang is going to come and beat us all up. So um, we do what we have to do. Yeah, there won't be no sacrifice. You know what'll happen? You know what'll happen, Varel, if you win? You're going to have a lineup around the corner of all the hottest uh, uh, women in town looking to uh, bang the white off your bones. It's going to be amazing. If you win, you will live like a legend. I mean, but we've never won. I don't want to get your hopes up. Uh, we're going to have to train hard over the course of this week till we get to the game on Friday to get you in fighting shape. But I think, uh, I mean, um, Camel, uh, General Manager Camel uh, takes your arm and sort of lifts it. And he examines, he looks at his arm. He says, look, look at this arm. I haven't seen, I've never seen muscle like this on an, on an arm. Like, he's going to be able to hit really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we have to get you on the team, uh, Mr. Vorel. Very well. I will oh, play in your yeah. game. Yes? You, you're going to jump? Really? They, they have the look of, like, uh, uh, that no one's ever said yes to them to join their team in, in, ever. <laughs> that, that was someone they wanted, basically. They're super excited. At least yes. they're talking. You gotta get planning now. All right. Um, well, our first practice, I mean, we could go, uh, you could do practice uh, today. Are you available for practice this morning? Actually, it's in the afternoon, not this morning. I'm excited. Maybe like one o'clock. Yes. I could make such an arrangement. Do you know where the stadium is? Big building, yes. Center of town. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not a building. It's um, it's a large field, a large field, just a few blocks uh, south of here. Uh, you know, you can't miss it. Uh, you, you saw the announcement, so it's in the same place. We're just going to practice in the field. Very well. Excellent. Excellent. This is amazing. What a day. Oh, joy to Paylor. Oh, my God. This is incredible. Hey, and he rubs him. He says, you mean joy to, to Andriesta. Oh, yeah, yeah. Joy to Andriesta. Um. <clears throat> This is an, what an incredible day. I think we might actually have a shot. Varel, what size are you? I, I get the impression. I don't see you wearing any clothes, but we have a uniform. Um, so uh, usually we have to wear the Trashburg gray socks. So we can tell who the gray socks are versus the pounders. So um, what what size of, of shirt can we make for you? I've never worn a shirt. Okay, you know what you have. We have to. We have a tailor. Um, we can get you fitted for one. Okay, can you? Um, we'll do it after today's practice. Okay, well, we'll after today's practice, we'll have you. We're gonna do practice, and then we'll have you go to. Uh, uh, we'll have you go to, uh, just next to the laundromat. Uh, do you know where the laundromat is? Yes. Okay, we'll have you go to the laundromat, and um, we're gonna get you uh, all set up. Uh, let me just. Uh, get, hmm. Uh, it's just next to the laundromat. Uh, you'll see Taylor. Uh, I, I don't. You have to talk to someone named uh, Estelle. The Taylor. Estelle the Taylor. Estelle the Taylor. But we'll we'll explain everything at, at the match. Don't worry about that now. I just. It would have been nice to get your 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 jersey all all made up before practice today, just to get us really in the feel of it. Uh, you're gonna love everyone. Um, yeah, and so what about your friends? Your friends want to? I mean, we need good players on the team. Um, it, it, we're really excited now that we have you. Surely you can. Uh, this gentleman here might want to join. Uh, I, and I heard, heard you were you came into town with a tiefling. I did. Yes. Can can the tiefling? Uh, got, she got a good swing. It's, it's hearty. Hearty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they can come too, if they want. If they want to join up. Very well. My companions will, if available, join me for this practice at one o'clock, after of which I have gone to the tailor. Yes, after after the practice. Just show up at Rutt Stadium, and we'll, we'll, we'll explain how the game works, and we'll see what we need to work on in the coming days. But I have no doubt that you're going to be incredible. Just incredible. Look at this. He's a natural. I mean, it's once in a lifetime you see a natural of such strength and poise. I know this kid can hit a ball. Yeah, he's, he's going to be great. All right. All right. Charlemagne, thank you. Thank you. Stanley, I hope we see you there. Um, it's going to be a week to remember. Let me tell you that. Yeah. And they, they walk out and they're buzzing and they, they leave. They come silent again. What has happened? Um, uh... I don't know. And I don't 
particularly care. Charlemagne. Uh, yes, Vorel. Or what? should I call you the great one? Uh, <laughs> I would... Uh, what day does this game take place on in the wedding schedule? It's on uh, Friday afternoon, so we're today Monday, so you have uh, four days to practice up and uh, then go kick their ass. Then the wedding is Saturday. The wedding is on uh, Saturday, yes, yes. Hmm. Well, no harm done then. Sounds like a glorious combat, though I am unfamiliar with the rules. Am I blood, blood, given a weapon? But um, in the manner of speaking, yes, uh, blood ball. It is. Uh, it is definitely a violent uh, sport, but I have no doubt. Uh, uh, I have no doubt. I have, I have many faith in you. Um, uh, yes, uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the you, one at a time. You take turns. Uh, uh, the the opposing team throw a ball, and then you hit it with the bat. And and then what you do is you try to run around this uh, circuit. Um, and once you uh, at the end of the run, you score a point if you get there, and you can stop on the safe spot. But if an enemy team catch the ball you hit and touch you with it, then you then they get to beat you up. So so, but then you switch on teams. So yeah, basically how the game works is usually one team get the shit beat out of them before the other and then can't continue. And the team that lasts the longest and with the most point win. But um, the Guzzle Gang Pounder have many big guy and all of the team normally on the Trashburg Gray Sock are very skinny and don't eat and get beat up very quick. But now with you on the team, I bet you you can last a long time. I bet you you're going to beat, uh, you can beat them. You can beat them. And your friends too. These beatings... Yes. Are we to take them without? Yes, you cannot fight back. If you are out, you have to take one hit from a baseball bat. And usually it's the strongest man on the team who does the hit. So when you guys get someone out, they're going to ask you to smack them on the face. And they cannot fight back. So And, and sometimes people get creative with how they hit people. They might hit them in the pee-pee. Or they might stick uh, stab them uh, with, the, with the baseball bat in the buttock. Or they might just smash their skull down. It's very creative how they, they deliver the out punishment. It's amazing. Stanley? Yes? This game does not sound to your liking. It all isn't to my liking. But by all means, let's all gather around and play a sport for more dumb people. But what he say is true, though, Stanley. If you manage uh, manage to beat the Guzzle Gang Pounder, they will invite you into the castle for the wedding, and that is exciting. I mean, that's an opportunity. I know I would join the team if I thought I had a chance of, of winning, but I have to run this place, and I know I will get beat. I am not that strong. But um, I hear that because uh, um, on, on the night that they offer the sacrifice, that they have... Um, a very elegant party, and it would be fun to be part of. Yes, oh, good. A would be party quite fun. Of more humans. It sounds so delightful. Does it not sound like fun, Stanley? Perhaps more fun than uh, exercising one's foot appendages in a or another, or another drink. Oh, yeah, it sounds really fun. Excellent, then. I will go ask Hope if she wishes to participate in this fun at the one o'clock hour. And I will turn stiffly and head up the stairs. I'll turn to Charlemagne. I don't think he knows what sarcasm is. How many drinks have you had so far? Probably five. <laughs> okay. The bottle still has a healthy amount in. Uh, get to Varel. You walk upstairs. Mm -hmm. I will knock on Hope's door. Yes? Mm -hmm. Hope! Varel? And you hear shuffling as I kind of like put the gun down. I'll open the door. We... Are you well? Uh, yeah, I feel fine. Why? A little tired, but, you know, it was a fight this morning. We've been invited to a game. To learn a game. Okay. This game is Blood Ball. 
You, you mean the big one that they play at the stadium. And the victors will have dinner in the keep. When? The night before the wedding. Well, that's a lot more fun than trying to kill the fat lizard men. But how do we get out of that one? It seems that perhaps our arrangement with the 26 man has been compromised in some way. What do you mean? How do you know this? His child outside of the gun store. He's probably just keeping tabs on us, yeah? He's likely the one who looted the gun store. Mm, it's fair. He plans more than perhaps we are capable of joining for. Well, I guess we might as well give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out today, we don't have to actually play, right? It seems I will be uh, conscripted, but you may watch with the intent of joining or not. All right, I'll give it a shot. Either way, war comes to this city on Saturday. I believe that completely. Oh, yes. If we can preempt it Friday, that may be a better option. Okay, yeah, sure. It's a better option. How does Nash fare? <laughs> I walk over to Nash's door and put my ear. Uh, and you, you hear a... <sighs> I think he still needs some time. <sighs> Hang in the Nash. It seems arm strength and resilience are needed for the sport. I don't believe Nash would be capable of making it past the first round. He might. The one thing I'll say from a meta perspective, just as you continue, don't mean to interrupt, but... If we do, if if that if it actually comes to it that we do play a blood ball game, it might be an extensive period of time. So, so your character might be sitting out watching. There might not be much going on, just as a participation thing. Now, if your character truly does not wish to participate, that's cool. But it would be like a, you'd be sitting out for a long period of time, not part of the action. In the event that we even get to a blood ball game, who knows? Everything might get resolved in the next hour. We don't know. But gotcha. There's something to think about as you decide whether or not you want to do this. But yeah, I'll be there. Wait, where do we meet up? One o'clock at, o o'clock the, at the stadium. Field. Oh, right. It's a field, but they call it a stadium. Yeah. Humans are like that. Excellent. The ball's not made of blood, but here we are. <laughs> That's a disappointment. <laughs> I agree with you on that one, Varel. All right, I'll head back downstairs. I'll go back to my room. All right. So was it? Everyone's just gonna chill for a little bit. Yeah, Stanley is probably now loudly speaking to Charlemagne about okay. just various things. Okay, so you're full on drunk. Yeah, he's the the thing. Good Char action for blood ball practice, Charlemagne. Right. The thing is, my constitution should not be like this. It should be way better because I've had the finest fey wines and nothing, not a thing. And this drink is a, sh a sham. And I've only had a few, and this is too far. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. So, Varel, you come down and hear this. <clears throat> Charlem says, wait, I'm sorry. You don't like the whiskey anymore? Is, I don't understand. Have you, did you ever have any fey wine? A fey wine? Uh, what is, I've had the it's wine before. A I, wonderful I drink. It's amazing. Fey, fey wine can make you, it's so strong, it can make you forget literally anything. 
and I've had it. No problem. This good, good for you, uh, Mr. Mr. Big Mr. Well, can you uh, problem can you here for a second? I think uh, your friend, I think your friend maybe uh, drink too much, uh, Stanley. I think I, I might say save some for another time. You might need it. Huh? You're getting a little angry. Your your energy is uh, very very um uh, very negative. I find. Uh, I am people. telling you that I should be able to have more. Varel, tell him I should be able to have more. This man wishes death. Who? who, who uh, Stanley wishes death. Yes, uh, Stanley seems to be under the effects of uh, some sort of taint at the moment, and you will excuse him, as he is not himself. I am exactly who I need to be, Varel. You're not yourself. And I'm going to try to use Mage Hand to pour an additional drink. Okay, you do. So he hasn't taken it from you yet, so you use your Mage Hand and pour your drink. Um, Is there any sort of skill check to see if that works in this state? Uh, I mean, no. You're good okay. Luck, man. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of another use for it for you, but uh, anyways. Um, and so um, uh, Charlemagne looks looks to you, uh, Varel, and says, uh, what is this uh, taint? A, uh... What is, what is this word, taint? It's the part between the privates and the butt. I don't know. There's nothing there. It's just empty. <laughs> is that what tell you meant him. this whole time? Tell him, Varel. You tell him. Is that why you giggle? What are you what are you talking about? We have faced many foes. A tainted blast me in the eye. <laughs> and when telling the story, this heroic tale, you and Nash are like to giggle. Is this why? Because you have established it as a word for your in between. I don't remember that, Varel. I probably wasn't there. Perhaps. Oh, man, uh, I think uh, if you have Pratik uh, this afternoon, uh, Stan Lee with the the, the Trashburg team, uh, he better uh, Stan stop Lee. Him. Stan <laughs> Lee. Oh no 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 no! Now he goes to grab the bottle from you. I don't even. Why did he even come up with the name Stan Lee? His real name was so much better. I don't know why he would even bother. Give me the bottle, Stanley. I'm from Fosh. Use Mage Hand to try to pull it back. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks. Uh, we're going to do a strength contest. Mage Hand isn't very strong, but we can go for it. Yeah. That's a one. <laughs> As if the dice knew. He pulls, he pulls the whiskey. He's like, Sacre bleu, maudit Carlos. Hey, you are being very irritating, uh, Stanley. I wanted to give you a drink and share like brother. Uh, we can talk about things. But now, I don't know. There's a negative energy about you. I think maybe you sleep it off. Huh? Right, go, go put your head down. Uh, hey. Well... Can you take I've this man to his room? I'm grown tired of this place and this gentleman, and I will take my patronage. You're bothering my other customers, eh? You've been very polite and nice, although strange, but but I don't like this. This I don't like. You're... Please go to your room and sleep it off. I'm sure we'll have apology in the morning. I'm sorry if I offended Trashberg. <laughs> I stand up and kick the chair over and <laughs> start walking Stan away. Lee, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, let's go. Ah, oh, get to your room. Go to your room, Stanley. I would destroy this entire town if things hadn't gone the way they went. I walk away. man. He goes over and picks up the chair. What is uh, what wrong with your friend, uh, Varel? Why is he? But uh, he's not very good drunk. I thought maybe we'd have a nice heart to art. I like to talk to people and have good conversation. But uh, this I do not like. Did uh, Stanley walk away out the door or upstairs? 
I walked upstairs. Okay. To my room. Okay. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I mean, he's only been up for two hours. He get you guys get up, have breakfast, you go out, come back hour later. He's drunk and want to kill everybody. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll sit down at the bar. Mm. <laughs> I will look. <laughs> I will look at uh, who was the man here in the cloak in the coat oh this man here that you uh, sit next to just a few moments ago yes uh, he um, I did not uh, get well, I don't think I got this name I remember he was um, here with your friends remember when you first got here you were asking for your uh, friend by the name of uh, uh, Jolt Eligo, you remember this? He he was with her, uh, with the part of um, I guess her her retinue. Um, I thought I heard maybe one of them call him Dashington, but um, uh, I don't. I'm not too familiar. Did we did rent him a room? But uh, like I said, they check out. But um, he was here, but he did not talk to me until today. He ordered breakfast. I was surprised to see him. I thought maybe they were all went to go live in the keep now, because uh, cause Jolt uh, going to marry Aladwir. What'd you say his name was? Uh, Prince, uh, Guzel, Guzel Prince uh, Aladwir. I see. Hmm. Oh, thank you. As for my companion Stanley, he has not been himself today. I... And responsible for him in a way. Oh. If he harms you or anyone in this establishment, I will see to him personally. Oh, well, it, I mean, I hope it did not come to that. I quite like you guys. Uh, you guys are interesting and come from strange place in the world. And uh, I mean, you're very brave to be wearing such weapons in this city. But uh, I know you are from out of town. I try to be understanding. Yes, so, uh, uh, about Please, that. I, I have children that uh, my sister raised, Cynthia, you remember her. She have two children, Simon and um and uh, Sally. Or excuse me, Sandra, not Sally. And um I want them to be safe, huh? So if uh, they get uh, violent or say, keep talking that way, I will he will avoid his uh, uh room here and I will have to make him leave. That is Perfectly fair. If if our weapons are causing inconvenience in our transit in and out of your establishment, I would have a request. This is fine. You, I, you are a guest uh, here, and uh, you know. But uh, yes, if the teeth guard have a pro problem with it, they will tell you, and you'll probably have to. They will confiscate it. Confiscate. Well, yeah. So keep them concealed if you can. Okay. I know you don't have a place to conceal on you, so perhaps you, you leave them in your room. The room is a far off way, and if Stanley were to make a move down here, I might be in short supply of time. Might I be able to keep them behind your bar? Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. A toss is all I ask in such a situation. Okay, we'll say, uh, okay, maybe um, you give me a bit of uh, you have gold on you or uh, some bolt. I store. I do not store for free because if the teeth guard come for inspection and they find it here, they'll think it is mine. It's a bit. Uh, it's a bit dangerous for me to to be keeping them. Fair enough. You are a businessman first. I will keep them in my room. I'm. I, I'm very sorry, Borel, but uh, it is a very unsafe, unsafe place to live in. You have to learn how to behave with the law and the rule of this place. The, there are rules that are written and there are rules that are not written um and you have to know both so i will do my best to guide you and give you information but i can't risk my my family um for for that you you understand right family is important i understand that thank you thank you what time is it Oh, it's probably about eight or nine in the morning. Is... <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a little morning drinking. <laughs> so well. <laughs> Very well then. 
and I'll head back up to my room. All right. And, and um, short rest we're at, it. We're at 8.08. I know we got a late start, but probably if we get into something else, might be little, everyone seems to just want to hang out in their room. <laughs> like, what an adventure. I'm going to play with my... No, my I mean, I, I I don't mind fast forwarding to at least, because I'm very curious about the baseball game, but yeah, I know we, we are at time. To, we don't have to act out the whole thing, but the baseball thing, I mean, it's going to involve some time. So if you want to do that, we can, but we might be here till no. Hour. We'll, we'll give Nash a chance to say he wants to come. How about how about that? I think so. It's yeah. a good. It's a natural stopping spot, not a yeah. cliffhanger. We did have an intense battle um, that got not as intense as the party members stopped participating. <laughs> 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 but it was a good show, and I think we leave it there and I, we'll I, find out. I would like to make one more request, though. Yeah. As I move to my room past Stanley's room. I'd like to listen in. To Stanley's room? Yes. Uh, door's wide open. I didn't shut it. I just went storming in here and I'm just kind of sitting on the bed just kind of dazed. So you were going to sleep? No, I'm not sleeping. I just pouted off. Well, okay. the, the door slamming open. Hope would come out. and S- Stanley? Okay. So Verona... I hope I got kicked out of downstairs. Oh no. He drinking too much, Stanley. I That's the thing is I have not. I am supposed to have a very good constitution which apparently is no longer the case. Why would that be? Because Stanley's a wimp, probably. And wimpy elves have wimpy constitutions, apparently. What do you mean? You're Stanley. And you're only half an elf. You're not a full elf. I mean, I'm not a demon. I'm Stanley. (laughs) That's... Yeah, that's it right there. Wait, what? Oh, go for it. Uh, are, you not- <laughs> <laughs> are you not Stanley? I'm Stanley right now. I'm certainly right not now doing as good of a job as I had thought, because Varel's always got an eye open. A good job he's doing, keeping his eyes open on what? And I'll start laughing and getting Um, jovial. It's it's a big secret. I'm not going to tell. Okay. And scene? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There will be dungeons. <laughs> there will be dungeons on Twitter. There will be dungeons.com for the wiki links and the uh, all the little uh, art up there. And subscribe to the show there. And tell your friends and review it on iTunes and whatever else it is you say at the end of shows. We're saying it now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Kyle, for hosting it today. Thank you, Kristen, for the awesome intro as usual. Uh, thank you, John, for. Being Showing amazing up. as always. <laughs> <laughs> For, I don't know, something. Uh, have a great time. Thanks, uh, chat room. And thank you. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com.